Uh, good evening, I'm Drew Garvin. I'm the, with Meridian Associates, the engineer for this project uh, for RMLD. Paul McGonigal's here to represent RMLD. Um, to catch you up to speed, if you remember a couple months ago, we came with a little different configuration. Uh, there was a change in the desire of how they wanted it to flow. Uh, so we made that change and came up with this new configuration, which we essentially ran by you, I think, in a general sense on our last meeting in November. Uh, but this has been detailed up a little further. Um, there is a, it's a one-way through-way come in off Ash Street, uh, 230, the main news headquarters is this, is this building here. Um, so you enter here, it's a one-way through and one-way out. Um, the rest of the RMLD facility is, goes on to the back. There's employee parking here and, and other facility buildings and parking in the back and rear. Um, so that all stays the same. Uh, this is essentially going to be used for customer parking. And also one of the intentions is to uh, install through a grant that they've uh, filed for a charging station, public charging station, EV charging station for cars with the ability to add an additional one in the future to service four spaces total. Uh, so that is the essential design. There is uh, one catch basin drainage structure uh, proposed where there was previously none as well as an underground chamber uh, drainage bed that it goes to to hope uh, to infiltrate some of that stormwater runoff uh, and recharge that into the groundwater and uh, but there is an overflow uh, designed as well to tie into the existing uh, town system but we are significantly reducing that the flow that goes into that uh, so with that uh, I'm trying to think of any other details there's two new there's two uh, there was originally two handicapped parking spaces. We're, we're maintaining those and adding uh, a walkway to get to what is the existing, what always was the existing crosswalk and entrance to the main to the main building for uh, customers if they need to pay bills or whatnot. Um, so that's been we're tying into that original crosswalk. Uh, and providing them safe access there from the from the new spaces, the new handicap locations. Uh, and a couple of uh, trees are proposed as well up out front. Uh, we called out some red maples uh, on, the, on either side of the either end of the parking area here, just to provide. The rest will be grass. This will be a grass island. The rest will be grass here. Small little grass island there. Um, this plan is actually slightly different than the one you guys have in front of you because this just got sent to me electronically today and it, cor it incorporates some of the feedback from the town engineer. That's those mass yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we did get uh, the comment the memo from the town engineer uh, and his one desire, I had this catch basin originally kind of floating out kitty corner on this to a point on this curve and he wanted on this rounding and he wanted it incorporated flush against the granite as well as a gutter mouth curb installed to just in, just to help capture that flow since it's the only structure that's going to be in the parking lot. I did have a conversation with him and ran this new sketch by him today before we came in and he was satisfied with this um, this new layout. Um, the, his other recommendations were in regards to the proposed sidewalk coming through here um, and it was in regards to an additional crosswalk uh, to be installed down below. We would like to request that this not be done uh, for a number of reasons. One being the purpose of this sidewalk is really going to be more for employee access from one building to another across or to the back for that matter there's a there's a gated access here that's for going to be for employees only uh, but it's it's really for that purpose um, 
the the main flow of pedestrian traffic we would like to go towards this existing crosswalk as it is today this door is really I'm gonna call it a private door it goes to their conference room here it's really not you can't enter from the outside is that right Correct. Yeah. so it's it's really just an egress out from employees having a conference in here um, and so he recommended a crosswalk to here and then connecting that from this pad to the existing sidewalk it could be done but again this is not where we want to direct pedestrian flow uh, especially customer there's an existing hydrant there there's an existing land there's existing landscaping there um, we just didn't want to go there if if the board agreed that it was not uh, necessary for the for the functionality of that uh, parking space and again there's that the, uh, for those for this parking area there is you know there will be obviously an existing um, lane available that has been in use since this this has been in place the, even the old parking system so I don't it won't you know it'll be normal for the for the customers to use that what what they should know uh, is the uh, existing access way um, and just to read just to reiterate one thing this is a this building is not being used it's it was the old substation it's an old substation and I'm not sure what the future holds for this building um, but there is a loading dock here that they're we're trying to maintain that's why we have the removable bollards in place on the chance that there's not uh, if they needed to use it uh, they could remove those bollards and still load on the access I've kept a couple of the ramps I've called for some ramping here just so we don't create a hard corner for a truck that was going to be backing into that area um, but again that's really the only reason for the ramps on those sidewalks at all it's not really an uh, a handicapped the purpose of it is not for handicapped uh, access and we feel like we provided that on the, on the lower end okay. Thomas from the board. well what happens to the lone handicapped spot how are they supposed to get across the street these two no oh, over the here single one so this is employee parking over here um, Right now, I'm not sure what they do. I don't know, Paul, if they, if they wheel down or if they wheel up here. Um, there's about eight spaces. Okay, so right now, we don't have any employees in wheelchairs. We do have a couple with handicapped stickers, but they, they can walk. Um, when this came up, I looked at that spot, and uh, I just was, was wondering why it's actually located there. It's been there for decades. But for employee parking, there's probably another um, six or eight spaces going yeah. down that same lane. Right. And at the other end of that square strip, of the building. there's uh, crosswalks with access to ramps up to our employee entrance into the uh, back entrance of the building. I actually think they put that in the wrong spot. So I was thinking that maybe I, I should probably look into it further and move that handicap spot at the other end. More sense. I brought. I, I did bring some pictures of the Google Map. Yeah. Um, that show what we're talking about. The, the bigger picture beyond down the way there. Um, thank you. Yeah, the other picture is something else. But so yeah, there's the spot we're talking about. So and here's the existing ramp. Spot. Existing ramp on the other end. I have another one here. Um, so I think if if it would satisfy the board, um, you know, if you're concerned about that spot, it's certainly possible to restripe that on the other end where it would make sense where that access where that other existing ramp and crosswalk exist. Yeah, I think you should do that because I think you're. I think that that's what the code says. I don't think you're complying with the Yeah, they put it right there. Yeah. And then they come up this way to employee mm -hmm. entrance, and this way up to the back deck. Mm -hmm. Does this have the detecting, detecting panel or whatever? Like, would these have to be upgraded if you moved this, this space to here? No, that is a ramp there, right? It is a, it's a ramp. It's a ramp. Yeah, yeah. sidewalk, cut sidewalk, and a crosswalk. It's it is ramped. Yep. Yeah. I would just. Um, you can put that in as a condition that they should restrike yeah. that. Okay. Sure. 
And uh, another question. What is to prevent the lights from the cars parking from shining into the residents across the street? Uh, right now, nothing. I mean, other than the, than the two trees and really just the one is in front. Nothing. However, this facility, this parking area really should not be used off hours. It's really not going to be in use. If you're going to use the charging station, you'd be facing away. So the charging stations are up. The charging station and possible future are facing away. But the RMLD does hold meetings at night, especially for the board. Correct. Yeah. So they do. They they do, and it's uh, it's whatever it's once a month or even twice a month for those meetings. Or we when what we read this one we didn't have uh, landscaping row of hedges going right across the front there. Mm -hmm. So. Um, that landscaping piece is still in, uh, you know, on my plate to still do, and I'm still going to do it with matching the landscaping that's against the building. Evergreen, yeah, shrubs. Oh, yeah. Evergreen shrubs. Yeah. So we can certainly provide that. We, I have not called out for anything on that on this plan, um, but I could, I guess, we could add some. Uh, we can add some evergreen can add shrubs if that's if they do want to make that a condition as well. Yeah. Need to be at a height that's like adequate to block that light. Yeah. Yeah. Vegetative buffer. Is that what we're talking about? A vegetative buffer. Uh, well, I would call it more of a screening. Of, of, you know, screening. Light, yeah. Vegetative screening for lights. Yeah. Okay. Um, the only question I have, maybe maybe it's here somewhere, is what the caliper size is on the proposed red maples? Uh, no, any call it cal caliper. Um, you know, tip typically we do like two to three inch caliper, I think, but we can install the new trees, but we can whatever the board require on that. I think we had talked about last time having them be the same caliper that we had uh, re required on the end of Ash Street. Okay. Where the uh, commercial plaza is. Okay. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure where that caliper is. I think when we, um, if, when we go to do the construction of this, the landscaping piece was going to be uh, my arm. I would take care of that. I was going to work with my landscaper that I have on contract. And we can put something together, a design, I can bring it up here and show you that before okay. we have to do anything to it. Yeah, that'd be good. All right. Conditions. One is to um, add a vegetated screen for the headlights. One is to work with the town for the landscape selection. And one is to relocate the handicap. Right. Okay. this latest plan to the materials? I will, yes. I'll provide a revised plan with some of those notations on it, uh, like calling out Handicap spot to be relocated. Oh, I'll be required. Um, like I'll condition all those things. Okay. Yeah. Um. There's no other comments. I have a motion to close public hearing. Did you get public oh. comment? Any public comments? Oh. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Um. Motion to 
close the public hearing for um, 230 Ash Street. Any second? All in favor? Any comments or edits to the decision other than uh, the conditions that we have? Based on the site plan checklist. Interesting. All right. Um, so, should we sub vote for the waivers? Or sure. Okay. I can get a motion to approve waivers F, G, K, L, M, and Q. Motion to approve the Waivers F, G, K, L, M, and Q. Second. No. All in favor? And then motion to approve uh, site plan review for 230 Ash Street uh, as amended. Second. Second. All in favor? No, thanks. Thank you. Thanks very much. Appreciate it. Now you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is minor modification for 258, 262 Main Street. Do you have the weight on this? Uh, you should. Okay. And we did notify, I did a courtesy notice to a butter, so it's probably good to wait. And what about the Johnson Woods request for extension? Can we do that? Um, yeah, you can read that. You might read it again also at 8.30. Okay. Um, but I did notify the neighborhood as much as I could. Well, if I'm going to read it again later, I'm not reading it now. Just want to do minutes? Sure. We have minutes for December 11th. There's November 6th, December 11th, and um, a change to the September 11th. Oh, it's just a name? Yeah, one of the abutters informed us we had the wrong name. Is it? When you all sleep all together? Did you just not print those? No, oh, I, I didn't print the, the September ones. I printed December and November. Uh, November you guys already had. Okay. November what? Six. Six. Yeah, so September 11th meeting had the name, it was a single name corrected and it was highlighted in yellow in the email that we received. So that's just, we just approve those as amended, as, or as corrected. That's all the change on those. We had already approved them. So let's get a motion. To motion to um, approve the corrected meeting minutes of September, September 11th, 2017. Favor? Now November what? November six. 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 Same thing. So you, I had given these to you guys last time, but you didn't get to them. 
Yeah. Number six. Um, so you don't have them in your packet today. I said, remember to bring your minutes. The number six is the one that had the percentage corrections that I commented on? Yes. Okay, so I did that. Yeah. But those are the only comments I had. Okay. Um, my math was a little odd because the, the percentages I read off at the meeting added up to more than 100%. But just because the property line was one length and the building had faces that totaled more than the property line's length because the wings kind of went oh, back yeah. in. Yeah. So I was taking any face that faced the property line. That's what I was over. That's architect math. <laughs> <laughs> it Someday makes total sense. <laughs> I just want to make sure I've heard you use the yeah. correct percentages. Um. to approve minutes for November 6, 2017. Second. All in favor? Okay. And time for December 11th.
motion to approve meeting minutes for December 11th, 2017. Second. All in favor? All right. Now we're back on. So now we have a minor modification site plan review for 258-262 Main Street, Reading CR Ventures. Do you have a plan or check? Yeah, I have it. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Tim Williams with Allen and Major Associates. And as, as stated, we're here for a minor modification for 258-262 Main Street on behalf of Reading CRE Ventures, LLC. Um, what predicated this minor site plan modification was essentially the permitting through the mass DOT for the two curb cuts out onto Main Street. Um, and what drove that was a previous, and we weren't the original engineers of record, uh, we were brought on to obtain the, the curb cut permits from the DOT and our scope increased when the DOT essentially had issues with the fact that the front half of the site drained into um, into Main Street unmitigated, so it wouldn't get caught in any catch basins. It was just sheet flowing off the site, and Mass DOT frowns upon that. Um, they want you to manage your own storm water on your own site. So as a result, we went through and we looked at what we needed to do to redesign, the, regrade the site to accommodate the DOT's request not to sheet flow drainage off. And as a result, we redesigned the site, minor modifications. Um, but we were able to eliminate some components, move some components around. Um, we worked with uh, the municipal light uh, to, to find a location for the transformer so that the design sort of advanced over what was previously approved. And I think that previous approval was almost two years to the day. Um, so I can walk you through those changes again. The first one was the stormwater. What we've done was we've been they originally had two infiltration systems on the site um, to pick up the back half of the site. We enlarged those systems. We um, were able to grade the site to capture all our stormwater, treat it, put it back into the ground. And I believe that's been reviewed by the Reading Engineering Department and found uh, favorable results. In the grading of the site, to, as a result of this drainage, we were able to eliminate the retaining walls that ran around the perimeter of the um, of the parking area. So we were able to modify that, eliminate those structural walls, and we are able to grade the site down to a two to one slope to eliminate those walls. Uh, based on all of our design, we are actually able to create almost a thousand square feet of, of uh, pervious surface over what was previously proposed. So right there there's three benefits, improved drainage, elimination of structural retaining walls, and the creation of a pervious surface. If you recall, the dumpster pad was located up in this corner. We since slid it down to accommodate the relocation of the transformer, which was formerly located over here. So with the relocation of the transformer, the dumpster moved. With that, we were able to actually reconfigure some of these parking lot, parking, uh, these two parking lots to, to function better. There's still the same number of parking spots, but we were able to pick up uh, two spots here, we eliminated a spot here, and we eliminated a spot along this edge of the property. Um, bike racks, the bike rack got relocated, now the bike rack is located up along the front. And one of the bigger uh, um, design changes that we made was actually the pedestrian access to the building. Originally there was uh, direct access off the sidewalk without any ADA accessibility. We've since added a uh, direct connection to the sidewalk across the front. Um, this will be a stairway, and then this will be an ADA accessible handicap ramp up into the building. Um, some of the other changes we made, uh, again, sidewalk, accessibility to Main Street. It's really pretty straightforward. It's essentially the same plan that was approved back in uh, January of 2016 with just those minor modifications. We have added some additional utilities to the site, working with the electric company. Um, there's the, the discussions about um, relocating a utility pole. As well, working with Mass Highway, we've added proposed gas to the building, which wasn't previously shown. So all the components are the same as approved in 2016. Um, the number of parking spaces, the building size hasn't changed, the building height hasn't changed. Light pole spacing hasn't changed. We still show the outdoor tables um, 
and benches back behind the site. Uh, the snow storage area is still in the same location that was previously proposed. Same with the handicapped parking spots as well. So, um, if there's any questions, again, I, I believe the, the, the engineering department indicated that the, this redesign was, uh, was favorable. And again, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer them for you. Questions from the board? Can you, um, uh, can you explain how the, what you did to the um, site grading so that you ended up eliminating those, um, those wall, the, the retaining walls, but still, like, is it higher? I just don't have a sense of what, yeah, what changed I, I don't know from what it was the, before. I have the grading plan on a board, I can grab it. A, a general sense so originally they had the site um, so it was configured so this half of the site drained to the back caught catch but basins on the screen oh you here. do okay yeah it's better so that people at home can see so it. again it's really the perimeter edge that we were able to regrade this out we in the reconfiguration we were able to actually pull this curb line in a little bit to eliminate those walls so along these this edge no more wall is needed because we're able to bring that curb line in and then grade it down to a two to one to the top of the curb. Follow me? Yeah. Uh, prior they had a, um, it was a, sm a short wall, it was probably two to three feet high. Um, in doing that we were able to, again, pulling everything away from the property line, slope that down and, um, and eliminate that structure that ran around the perimeter of the site. Um, uh, the, the thing that I recall uh, one of the discussions I recall from it before with those walls is that you know two to three to it wasn't four I right I think it was about it was bumper height um, right uh, which limits I, I remember having a discussion about sort of the functionality of um, of the spaces um, being able to get in and out um, and I guess uh, um, I still, um, those last couple of spaces that you added on the back, I, yeah. I wonder how uh, the functionality of those still. Um, I mean, it's great you've got a 24 foot aisle that works. Um, they're, they're good size, you know, typical size spaces. Um, but you, uh, I don't know. Can you back out in are in you, in not have to back out the the aisle? Are, are you referring to this these spaces? Yeah. Space right yeah. Here? yeah. Well, we've added a little knockout here to allow that movement. With a 24 foot drive aisle, someone should easily be able to back out of that um, and circulate back out through the curb cut. But it's a valid concern. Is it more than one movement, though? Is it basically backing out almost straight and then having to come forward and then back? Well, he, again, this knockout, uh, you got a two foot radius on it. It probably bumps out like three feet. I think you, sh you should be able to make that maneuver. Um, we see this parking lot configuration all the time, as opposed to having the curb line come straight across the back. We do have. We still are maintaining that uh, that screening hedge that was previously um, proposed. Well, I guess that's just a curve now, right? There's no retaining walls along that. That's correct. Back end, so the bumper. So the bumper can go them. hang over it. Yeah, we'll get a question. Yeah, we public comment on that. Yeah, it's less of a concern because there's because there there is no retaining wall, you know, like the overhang. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think the proposed movement is for the dumpster removal, though? 
That's what I'm interested in. Yeah, he's going to have to come in here and make that turn to pick a dumpster up. He's going to have to do somewhat of a K turn to get into that dumpster location. But, but is know. he going to back into the lot? Oh, no, I, I think he can pull in and make that turn, pick that dumpster up. I'm not even quite sure what the type of dumpster would be, whether it's totes or it's whether it's a rollout dumpster. We've seen those as well, where someone would go in and, and or the driver would go in and roll the dumpster out and then pick it up, um, as opposed to one that was just sitting on the concrete pad. Yeah, yeah. But even if he has to, even if they roll them out and they pick them up with the front, now he's facing um, he's facing west. So what does he do now? Well, it was the same. It was the same situation in the previous plan, where the dumpster was up in this corner. And he still had to make those same maneuvers. Um, uh, but at the at an angle, sort of already halfway through the halfway through sort of a typical um, west to south, and then backing up to the north, and then coming out. He has a three-point turn. <coughs> I'm just wondering if anyone's looked at that size truck. That's going to be. I guess now it's a 90 degree, you know, it's on 90 degrees from the front of the truck. It's several movements either way. You've got two twenty-four foot aisles, you know. I, it's, the driver can't figure out how to <laughs> turn around, and that you know, if one of them was was a smaller aisle, mm -hmm. then I'd say yeah, there's a there's an issue here, but it's it's all pretty standard stuff there. Okay. Other questions from the board or staff? Take some public comments. Uh, please state your name and your address. Can you make comments? Sure. Hi, I'm uh, Tom Goldstein. I live in uh, Ten Pine Vale. Um, um, the, the question I had was, um, with the removal of the wall, is there, is there going to be? I mean, I imagine with the cars that are going to be parking there, the, the wall would, you know, protect us from some of the noise of the cars. But now that the wall is gone, was that in some consideration? Well, the wall along that edge was only a foot high along this edge. We still are maintaining the, I think it's a uh, eight foot or six foot high screen fence eight foot. as well. We've got the proposed uh, screening fence along this edge as well. So I don't really see the, the, the lights from the vehicles impacting um, the property. Yeah, it wasn't going to help you for noise. And because the grade is sloping up towards that fence a little bit, you're right. still protected from a car sort of pushing past that slope. And so, with the with the gradation that you're talking about, you're saying that it's pushing it to the back of the of the lot, or, or you were saying to where you were doing the the, the drainage was towards the. Oh no, the back. drainage is going to still remain within the parking lot. Okay. Um, so it's all captured. We're capturing all the impervious surfaces, the parking lot, and the building, putting it underground. That's exactly what they were doing before. Although they were only taking half of the parking lot and putting it into uh, into the underground infiltration system. So. The DOT requested we capture everything and put it under the where, where, where are those pieces captured? Um, there's two catch basins at the curb cut, another two catch basins at these yeah. curb cut. One internal to this parking lot, okay. one internal to the, this edge, and another one right here. And those are? This this one at this edge that's slopes, slopes in like this? That's correct. So this is the higher ground and then it slopes down? That's correct. Oh, right. And then, with the with the changes in the wall and, and that in the 
those areas there. Um, there were there are trees that align that area. What's the what's the thing? I guess if the, if they're there and they're not impacted by development, then they will remain. Um, otherwise, I think uh, they'll probably if they're on his property, they might go away. So they won't be touching anything that's on the adjacent property, but he's got the right to develop his land if that gets his minor modification. Um, well, the, the trees removal would have been agreed to in the previous version of okay. the plan. It looks like there's three or four that are in the lot. That'll probably come we, down. We, we had been in contact with the owner, and he said that he would, you know, discuss the you know, the, of the trees, you know, with the potential to keep them but we never heard back. And so we're wondering, you know, with this modification, it sounds like you know, the plan is that you're definitely going to get rid of them. Well, what we don't see here is trees that are beyond this drawing. And it's very possible that there are more trees than just the three that are shown on the, um, the lower lot and the one that's shown in the corner of the upper lot. Right. So if you... I don't know what the trees are outside yeah. our property boundary. I would just keep in touch with them. That's something you guys can can always talk to them about. Oh, they, you're saying there are some trees that are, are that are. Yeah, you can see the three little circles in the lower lot at like along the edge. Yep, like one, this? two, three, and there's a bigger one shown in the upper corner next to that catch basin, right there. Oh, uh, this is a tree. Yeah. actually more more trees as you come back down the lot but right those were all scheduled to come down from the previous approval and so if the trees are, are on there then they need to stay on there is that, is that it or is it just there for you know to detail the, the lot not necessarily that they need to stay well they're not going to stay because they live in the pavement yeah they're, they're part of the existing conditions plan actually those trees there's a series of trees right here you can see them along here that were picked up in the survey so all those trees actually live in the proposed parking spot. So then if we need to discuss that, we need to take that out for That's correct. Certainly, they have to limit their work to their property. Right, right. We Just understand that. Right. It's, it's their property limit. Like the trees are you know, a significant part of you know, our residential area. Oh, sure. So, the removal of those four or five, you know, very old and very big trees is going to be a big impact for us. Other comments? Yes, sir. Mike Farrell, my wife Lynn, we own that first half, uh, house on Pine Mill. My concern is now my property is several feet above the grade. So that wall where there was only a foot was protecting my wall from the cars. So you remove that, was protecting my wall. So I guess that's really what, and maybe you can, what you had said before is you change a grade with a sort of a replacing the wall with a two, essentially a two to one slope. That's correct. So if, if that's the case, then the top of where that retaining wall was going to be is still going to not change the elevation, correct? That's and correct. It's, it's just instead of putting a wall, a, you know, a two foot, two or one to three foot wall, it, they're going to, he's going to slope it out some. This ret raises up a little bit, and it'll it'll be able to slope out right. some. So the yeah, top of the car from hitting my wall, the the top of the 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 elevation won't change. It hasn't changed, right? That's correct. Essentially, this previous parking lot was right up against that wall, and and from the plans, it looks like your wall might actually be on um, the subject parcel. Well, because the wall actually belongs to them. Okay. So that wall is going to remain. We have that wall called right, out. What to is remain. to protect that wall? Well, we have right now. We've we've actually pushed this curb line out. So the the it, what it was it was a parking stall and it was a wall. Now it's a parking stall two and a half feet then a wall. So there's two and a half feet for your parking to overhang prior to getting to that existing wall. The wall is there now. Yes, exactly. 
but a car can still hit it. Okay. You should do this first. Why do I have to do this? So originally the wall was here, and there was a very short distance and some new retaining wall. What he's saying they've done is they sloped back to the parking lot. So they've pushed they pushed the cars back further. And there's a raise, there's a raised section of grade that's going two to one, you said, right? There's also a curb there as well. And the curb. This is that retaining wall. The land is sloping up to the retaining wall, so the car would have to really come up past that curb and up that slope. And it's further away than it was when the low wall was there. Right. And in front of that wall is the eight foot high screen fence that I believe was previously discussed. Well, but the fence is not the car. Um, that's, that's not what the fence, the fence is there for. The, the fence is there for your privacy. Um, but the concern is whether a car could stop. Now, I've just sketched that from what I understand is happening. No, that's I don't know exactly the actual correct. So they're saying that they've actually pulled the front of the cars away from the wall from where it was before and there'll be a curb that's correct there was no curb before it was a straight wall so you're taking more yeah, space into the parking lot are you losing parking spaces by doing that nope we just reconfigured the parking lot that's mm -hmm. all everything's essentially the same i don't understand how you could lose that much space yet not affect the parking spaces. Are you making the spaces smaller? Nope, everything is the same. Is the alley, the uh, center section where people drive smaller? Nope, it's 24 feet wide, 18 by nine parking stalls. In fact, we bumped this, this sidewalk out another foot to make it a five foot sidewalk. I'm going to suggest that better engineering sometimes makes for better plans. Without commenting on the previous. Does it make sense to you what he's saying? I'm seeing the plan and everything he's suggesting makes a lot of sense. Yes. Okay. Um, suggesting that the previous plan may have just had more um, fluff in it, I don't know, or less refinement, for time, perhaps. So is the building location actually the same, or did you shift it over when you took away that walkway along the south side? I believe the building location is the same. Because they've removed um, the, walk, the walkway along the south side, I believe. So the, the side setback is 47.6. It was previously oh, 48.4. We did shift the building over a slight bit. So that's how they got that to work. It's only six inches. It's, only six inches. <coughs> it's, still, a, it's still a full six depth inches. parking space. <laughs> it's a generous um, aisle between the two parking spaces, 24 feet. And there, there's still room there. Other comments? Yes? Um, I'm Jennifer Colleen. I'm the owner of 12 Pine in the lab. So my understanding was the last approved plan continued the eight-foot screening fence the entire northern boundary of the property but it doesn't look like the new plans show that that fence extends that far we've extended the fence to this point right here so at the last meeting that we had here there was an agreement made that the fence would be extended alongside the um, Line. Line. It was in the decision. It was a condition of approval in the decision. Yep. Yeah, it says here um, along the entire northern, northern and a portion of the southern property lines. Okay, well, so that's fine. I, I, I'm sure we're comfortable with They're that. still bound by all yeah. the conditions in the original decision. So when they come in for the building permit, we'll make sure that they've complied on their plans with what we've asked for. We'll note that in this decision as well, that it wasn't shown, but um, sure. as Julie said, there's actually language in this decision that says you're bound by all the conditions of the other one that aren't changed here. Eight foot wide, eight foot tall, wood fence. Okay. 
foot wood fence. Yeah. Eight foot wide, eight foot tall wooden screening fence, which means that they can't it can't be like a picket wooden picket fence that doesn't provide that screen. <laughs> Any other public comments? I have yeah. some more. Okay. Right. Um, at the last meeting, I just mentioned one concern I had was the, the seating area that there were heavy smokers in, that worked in the building that they might you know, use that as the smoking area and that would really you know, impact our size, I guess. Um, and I, they were kind enough to move the seating a little bit away from our our property but i just wanted to ask you know if this becomes something that um you have a complaint about how will that be you know, is there language that can be put into the plan i mean i'm not going to be unreasonable in terms of no, my I, complaint, I understand, I understand. But i'm just trying to think about what control we have over that say you're so your neighbor to the east was smoking in their yard. We can't control that, but this is a commercial property, so what control do you really have over that? Um, one of the things that we've gotten involved in in the past is um, with a mixed-use building, like 30 Haven, uh, we had to get involved in this issue with smoking. And um, when the problem arose, we addressed the complaint and worked with property management to come up with a solution. So that was how we handled it in that instance. Okay. I don't know that we can do anything proactively now to anticipate a problem since it's, it, it's not even, we don't even know if it's going to happen. I guess your first recourse would be to talk to the building owner if there was something going on back there that was offensive, and then come to the town after that if you were getting satisfaction. And it may be something we could involve health with as well. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's a good point. I just don't know how you control it. Certainly, yeah. if they were proposing, if this were a restaurant and they were proposing an outdoor seating area, you know, we'd have control over that. They, they couldn't do it there because of the transition zone, but that sort of thing. My biggest concern is that becomes the smoking area which is going to be people to be in that area for that reason. Yeah, I, I just have a feeling that people are lazy and they tend to smoke as soon as they can get out there. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put the ashtray right outside the door, that will keep them over there. <laughs> It is quite far, so it, this is a this is all commercial. This is not residential. I guess maybe in the nice weather, people might venture out there. And I would just say stay on top of it. If it starts to become a problem, then we'll see what you do. One other point, Mr. Chairman, is the right now the parcel is made up of uh, well, the property is made up of two parcels. Um, the intent is to file an 81x to to combine those into one. So. Just one last. So, this, can you show me where the, the, the snow storage is? That um, snow storage is right there. So, okay, we held the same snow storage as on the previously approved plan. Okay. And when we did all of their work on the watershed, did they obviously consider our properties? Oh yes. Side yeah. and there's no indication that that's going to increase our chances. No, in fact, I think we've reduced the, the, the runoff based on our our, uh, our drainage analysis. Okay, it's just a very quick. Okay. okay, other comments? Anything else from staff? One last question. This this area here is this salt is this a solid area 
Or right is here? That, yeah, this. Oh, this would be a landscaping area. Okay. Previously, the transformer was located there. Okay. And that, that's kind of what predicated the dumpster relocation and the reconfiguration of the parking lots was to get the dumpster out of that location. I mean, the transformer. Okay. That's great. So that's better for you, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so, so when you drive in through that one curb entrance, that, that's literally a dead end parking lot. Exactly. Okay. If there's no more comments, we'll uh, close the... Uh... Just one last question. Um, if there's a timetable for construction or... I would imagine they want to put a shovel in the ground as soon as they can. Uh, we're still waiting on the mass DOT um, curb cut. We expect to have that within the next couple of weeks. So I would imagine that as soon as the asphalt plants open up in the spring. Is that correct? So when you start, when you have scheduled to begin construction, will the funders be notified of that when that construction will begin? No, no notice. We have a pre-construction meeting, but that's with the building inspector and other staff just to talk about um, the hours of construction under the town bylaw and some of the other things that we uh, plan for when we have a major construction project. That's a staff um, meeting. Um, you already have a fence up? Do you already have a fence? I'm talking to the developer, yeah. actually. Do you already have a fence around it? I don't know. I mean, do, you could just send out a courtesy notice to the abutters saying we're going to be starting in two weeks. Well, the only reason I bring that up is because our property is rental property. So, in fairness to the renters, I'd like to let them know, listen, this is when they're going to begin this. That was my purpose in asking the question. Mm -hmm. If you'd like, you can use So, um, different comment. Um, the last, um, the last approval actually had a requirement in there that the outdoor seating area, at the rear of the site, shall be located no closer than 50 feet from the northerly property, northerly residential property line, um, which um, my quick bad math there um, brings that would mean those tape the picnic tables have to be right on the edge of the parking lot as shown they are not no where we're shown no where you're showing them. over yeah. where they were previously located um, on the so that's right so I think that's that's I don't know 55 or 60 feet from the property line um, to rear setback is uh, to the parking lot to the curb. Rear setback's 20, so we're probably 25 feet from the rear parking lot. So you're right. It needs to get pushed out another 25 feet. Yeah. So all those, all those decisions will be reflected in the permit plan, sir. Someone like you were saying that based on the see that you would anticipate starting construction in the spring? Well, that's up to the project proponent, but that would be make logical sense to me. I think the permit's been set around for two years. And, and there still has to be like so what final permits or final approvals or anything yeah. before before that construction starts then? That's correct. We have to file for a building permit. We also have to file with the EPA um, because the site's over an acre, I believe. So we need to go and file uh, a NIPTES with the EPA for our stormwater. Construction, construction stormwater management. So, a little under an acre, so it's not subject to it. So, those are both like construction permits versus you know they'd be good to go with the site plan, um, but both the building permit, but NIPTES permit. It's more about how they manage construction. That's right, right. and they actually don't need a NIPTES permit. No, we don't. We're under no. an acre. Yeah. Right. But there's, if you, you 
do a copy of the decision if you if you've left your email or whatever it has it outlines like the whole process that we go through when we come in for permits and everything we've asked them to provide um, at each stage of the development okay so if there's no more comments <laughs> we'll close the public hearing And motion, yeah. to close the public motion to hearing. close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Hit the vote for one. Just two. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, where do we want to? Mention the fence and the benches, right? Because those are two things that are shown. They're shown incorrectly, yeah. even though they're bound by the previous condition. So I could add some language under condition number two where I re reference that prior decision to yeah. say, including but not limited to. Sure use things that we've noticed are not in the right place. Um, I'm also going to add some language about the 81X plan in here, since the prior decision calls for an A&R. Does that, does that change anything you're doing with MassDOT? Where's, where's the property split? Is it um, east-west? What property split? Is that really that long though? Yeah. It's like right here. Okay. Oh, but down. So you've got one yeah. curb cut on one property and one curb cut. Yeah, on but one they're it's under the same ownership. Okay. Yeah. They merged from a zoning perspective. So what the original decision had was an A&R plan, but that's really for we're actually merging combining them. So that's why the X under the statute is more appropriate than an A&R plan. Okay. As long as it doesn't confuse DOT and make yeah. them reconsider something. <laughs> Not if you got them to approve something. <laughs> yeah. Any other edits to this decision? Have you seen it? You're okay with it? Comments? Forward comments? No edits? Okay, we get a motion to approve this as amended. Uh, motion to um, approve the minor modification for 258 to 62 Main Street um, as amended. Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Thanks. was a minor amendment um, for the Johnson Woods that was continued from last time, but they've asked for an extension, so I'll read this. This is a letter from uh, the attorney. This is to request that the meeting schedule for January 8th, 2018 on the subject matter be continued until the next regular CPDC meeting. The continuance is requested to give Johnson Woods more time to constructively address the issues that have been raised. Thank you. This is from uh, Bradford Latham. Again, this is for the minor mod at Johnson Woods. Yeah. Talk about that. I know. My wife has talked to you before. So, when, yeah. when will that be continued to? Um, January 22nd at 8 p.m. Okay, so, can I get a motion to continue that? A motion to continue, continue the um, minor and 
PUD amendment to um, the date Julie stated? January 22nd at 8 p.m. Yeah, if you want, I can take your second. Second. All in favor? For accuse myself. That's right. Okay. We have a 9 o'clock on this 467 man. That's noticed, right? It is. So, um, you can backfill with a discussion of the zoning bylaw amendments if you want. Okay. Um, Let's do that. I've scheduled a public hearing on these for next your next meeting. Um, this time is of the essence. So I looked at these and they they all um, it's nice and neat. Easy to read. And because there's no drawings, I just cannot get my head around. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, I know. I, I'm trying to understand if there's yeah. impacts beyond like right. the few sites we sort of talked about, and I don't know. It's that's it's so tricky. I drawings would help if there was a way to draw every possible site. <laughs> there's probably gonna be one or two properties somewhere where there's an unexpected consequence. Yes. I don't know whether that yeah. that's enough to stop it. But I, I like the idea of taking everything and putting it back into the table with some footnotes. The table's an easy thing to do. So this is going to town meeting. Um, I mean, you guys have to decide, and then the board of selectmen would have to decide to put it on the warrant. But that is the idea. Prove it. <laughs> Thing. Well, we're going to have a public hearing on it. Okay. The next we'll, meeting. There'll be comments and potentially edits, stuff we might find between now and then. And then we would approve language that gets. Right. We would approve language that we recommend be added to the warrant. And then the Board of Selectmen has final say on whether they want it. Right. Oh, and and Dev Town Council, Council will review, will review it. it as well. Um, so, my idea was that you would have reviewed this at one of the prior meetings, but as you all know, the meetings are so long, we just didn't get to it. So I apologize for the kind of rushed feeling of it. Um, but Tony and I have met on several occasions and gone through it and fine-tuned it. Um, it's hard for me to figure out what the Consequences, yeah. Like, what, yeah. What, are, what are the questions that are kind of come up from this? I'm trying to look at it. Um, my, my impression of this, again, is that town meeting won't understand it. So they're going to rely on us to explain it to them. And what are you going to present? What is someone going to present at town meeting? I'm not a town meeting member, by the way. <laughs> What's going to be presented at town meeting to make somebody understand what this means? Um, hopefully they'll trust us on it. But if they don't, if they get confused by it, well, we'll show them. We'll probably have to come up with some diagrams, I think. Um. Okay. Well, can you bring up the zoning map for the industrial district? So just while you're doing that, the, the footnotes for the most part are a movement of items from before simply into a footnote format. I mean, I think that would be the first thing to call out is that there is no change in language necessarily. It is just a relocation. Right. Yeah, some things were relocated so, so that everything's in one place so people know exactly if they want to do this situation they have this you know number one or whatever they need to look at right there yeah yeah because in a way this calls more attention to it because it's all 
in one spot, right? Just can. Kind of so it's harder to miss something when you're designing correct. a site. It's all. I mean, it's it's clear, but that means there's more scrutiny on it. Right. So the specific, well, one of the specific conditions that we were trying to um, mitigate. What am I doing? Oh my God! So is, is this one right here where you have along the back of these properties on Ash Street? you have a direct adjacency between an industrial district and a residential district without like a street getting in the way. Um, and Tony knows this area better than I do um, and knows that there's a significant grade change. Um, between I'm saying they're sections. almost 40 feet up in the air. Yeah. Which Ash, the residents? Ash Street. Ash Street. For the yeah. residents overlooking the industrial. So the, Train tracks or no, the train tracks are closer to are between I've seen that down Walker's Brook. If you go behind the DPW, there's that huge hill. Yep. Yeah. And all the residents are up on there. Yeah, yeah, I've walked the dog up to yeah. yeah. And then like another thing that we kind of try to account for is the fact that within the, the, the industrial area, especially on this side of the tracks, there's a number of lots that are just like landlocked by other industrial lots so like they, their direct adjacencies on all sides or on many of their sides are other industrial lots not residential not business um, so potentially we can relax the conditions along those lines um, especially if a developer wants to you know accumulate multiple parcels so that's footnote six for the most part sorry it's so tiny mm -hmm. um, Yes, that is the most six. So in this case, footnote six is a brand new footnote, correct? Right, that's entirely new. Yeah. Okay, so the presentation at town meeting would show something like that. We could, we could have some bracket that said these are just relocated, this one is new. Yeah. Explain what it means. Right. So similarly up at the top here where things were moved, yeah. say where it went. Right, okay. Well, town meeting likes a very specific format, mm -hmm. bold and cross out. Well, that's what they're going to get. But in the presentation, get, with, the presentation with, with diagrams. Yeah. When you look at this page here, when you look at page two with all of this red, yeah. They're they're gonna get they're gonna freeze. Yes. And you just say most of this has just been relocated to the footnotes. Do you remember what we did um, for the zoning project? Um, we called it uh, uh, it was um, translation guide. We did a translation guide for the um, big zoning project we did back in 2014. And we took, we made a chart and we said, the old version had this, this, and this, and this, and that was on half of the page. And then on the other half, it was what changed and what's new. And we highlighted and color coded it. Um, so we could try to do something like that if that, yeah. I think this will translate well into that because there aren't that many changes. It really there is aren't. A, a bunch of stuff being moved into the footnotes. <coughs> There's some edits to the numbers in the table, and yep. then there's a few new pieces of language. And so I think, you know, the map will show them where this is happening so they don't freak out, make them understand that great change. Which is <coughs> yeah, the translation guide, I think, was effective. The only question is, do we include that as the background? Say it again. Do we include it in the background in the report of the warrant? You could if they like to get everything. So you give them the, they want the, the strike through, they want the bold and cross new, out. Cross out, they want the new, right? They, want, uh, they really want bold and cross out. Just bold and cross out? Yeah. Give them everything, okay. Uh, bold and cross out is what town meeting has been very, very clear about. We do that with the guide. Yeah. You know, it's possible that we get the guide, well, 
you said that this is scheduled for the next meeting? Yeah, it's not possible. No. no. I'm away next week. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure we're all. Well, unless somebody wants to volunteer from CPDC to put the guide together. That wouldn't be possible. Not by the 22nd. We'll always Translation take guide? Look at the old one. That. Oh, yeah, I sure. I thought I built the old one. It should be obvious. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll put it together. We're going to wait until 9. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. A lifeline. I mean, get it started anyway. Uh, yeah, get it started anyway. Format or something. Oh, it doesn't have to be the actual, so we don't have the all of it actually done, if you can take the format. That, that uh, this I can work with you on at least yeah. queuing up the format, uh, and, um... You know, what I did last time was just, uh, two columns, no, no, and I went through and I broke down the uh, current bylaw into each section. Yeah. And then the, on the translation was whether it was moved to somewhere, yes. it was deleted, or yes. it was new. They just went every single one. So, and there aren't that many here, so... No, it's a whole lot easier at this time. I think, I think my second quick comment would also just be for us to look at footnotes one through four and pretend that they are new, as if they're... what questions could come up on those. What, you know, again, this folks will be looking at this because it's now a little bit clearer. So what... so I would... To you to see what, um, whether you see any red flags, any questions, any things that are unclear in this. I had a fight for number one. Yeah. Joey wanted to remove it. Footnote one. Is that what you're talking about? That's the 10 foot minimum or average of the two abutting oh, properties. I I, yeah, we had a discussion about this. I wasn't sure. It was something that we wanted, but I was convinced by you guys that it's a good thing to have. So. I, mean, I think if your smell test has been satisfied, then yeah. And then, Tony, your um, comment that you made to me over email about keeping the um, in section 641 and in the table 6411, mm -hmm. you said you wanted to keep, if possible, be within 100 feet of a residence district for the slightly increased side and rear setbacks, and I wasn't really sure what you meant. Well, what you have right now is yeah. that you have to have an adjoining lot line, which means that if there is a street separating an industrial from a residential, right. the, in the increased side setbacks don't aren't affected. So instead of it being, as you see, it would have to be 50 feet under the new one for our side and 50 feet for rear, but it's 20 feet. So you're thinking of Salem Five Bank. I, I could be thinking specifically of Salem Five like Bank. I, so, because, yeah, because I, I, I think in a corner condition that would, right, because they have a frontage and then they yeah. have that frontage requirement that's pretty, it goes back to the table, but right. then they have another street. Right. So I, I okay, all right. I, that helps that I, if I can visualize like a scenario. Um, so you want to keep the side setback bigger? I would like to. <coughs> uh, of course, I will Where refer to whatever the board decides. But the, what I will work off of is your version. So what you've put down is what I will use for the translation table. 6412, the new 6412. Is that what we're talking about? Actually, table 6411. It's the top of page 5. Oh, I see. Never mind. That's broken. You're thinking that the side side setback on a property, essentially on a corner, mm -hmm. which is in an industrial district, and opposite, across the street is a residential district. Yes. But that should not be waived to 
so like you don't see the street as acting as a buffer at all. I see the street as acting as, as part of a buffer, but I'm looking to... The problem this town has, and I'll say it again because I've said it every single time, is there are no buffers. We go from one zone to another with no transitions. And I'm just looking to see if maybe we can keep some sort of transitions in place, especially when you start thinking about what they could build within that side yard. But you could have your residence, and next to it could be the building height, 45, a 60-foot high building, basically. So you're right? saying that that's a zero setback, though? No, I'm not saying it's a zero setback. I'm saying if you can put a 60-foot building there, I'd like to push it back as far as possible. Sorry, what's the side setback on that? That would be, uh, right now, what was 100? That's supposed to be 50. That's 100, supposed to be 50. And other permitted permissible uses, so the side could be 20 feet. Well, yeah, because like, so this is only if they're sharing a lot line. Tony's concern is where there's a street in between. And what I, what I said is when you have the lot line as a street line, you defer to what's in the table. So the other table, the main dimensional table. Um, <laughs> Six point three. So like, and that, that actually varies by whatever the use is, but. Um, I mean, the street's going to be 20 feet, and a 20-foot setback puts that 40 feet back from the far edge of the right-of-way. Mm -hmm. And then there's probably a setback on the residence. So physically, the building isn't that close, and that gives you some landscaping capacity to buffer. Us anyways, the, the difference is the trick with that is that um, that would be like the one instance where we're saying sharing a lot line with or adjacent to a street it, and like everything else we have it it's, it's kind of separate like if, if your lot line is a street line you defer to what's on the table if your lot line is directly adjacent to another district then you have different rules so that's that's where we get into more nuance, more examples, more questions at town meeting, um, and then a, and then potentially open up a can of worms for like, why are we changing any of this at all? That's just my yeah. my initial reaction. Buildings per lot? 6.26. So this is changed from the negative to the positive? Yeah, we tried to make it more. Did we get something wrong? Um, no, I guess. I don't remember. I mean, so what happens? What ha Do we need to say what happens in um, that you? You can't have more than one principal building in a residential district. Well, so we have the provision that if it's not expressly permitted, it's not allowed. So here we're expressly permitting more than one building per lot in these districts. But do you think that's not clear enough? Uh -huh. This just says you can have more than one principal building in A80, Business C, Industrial, and PUDI. It doesn't say in all, it's crossed out in all districts. Yeah. Um, so specifically yeah. just these four districts, yeah. I think it's pretty explicit. In some cases, we 
restate the obvious, the hammer home point in a case like this, we were pulling stuff out. Maybe making it more vague. I think from a from a technical standpoint, it's it's fine. I'm not sure who's really going to try and put more than one building. Well, this was actually one section where I had a clear vision for what was intended, <laughs> because these lots tend to be bigger, and so you might do something with multiple buildings to create some sort of campus. Well, yeah, I have no problem with what's what's being said. It's the question is, you know, that switching um, the de emphasis. Right. That's fine. Right. Right. Well, let's think about that. Um, yeah. See if anything comes up at the public hearing. And then we still have hanging out there the 84 feet yeah. hotel. And then and the rest of that section, so it's on page two towards the top. Um, you guys had mentioned that it might have been a hangover or a holdover from um, Business C Hotel Motel. That wasn't around for. Um, so I didn't know if it's just, if it should just all get taken out or. Um, yeah, how are you feeling about this today? Because you don't want to have a maximum height? No, I, I don't know if that's if, you, if that part would be taken out, but like all the conditions that go with it. Like the first one just seems ridiculous to me. Um, this, that's facing true north, right? That, that plan, north is up? So south, uh, all of the properties in the industrial district cast a shadow for the most part away from the residential district. Um, maybe early in the morning you might get some something that way, but for the most part that arc is sort of coming around the bottom of the map. I think there probably should be some language in there, though, that if, if the structure were to cast a shadow, and the, the structure should not be allowed to cast a shadow on a residential property. And if we were for some reason to allow an 84-foot high right. hotel, um, we're certainly not going to just you know, start growing moss on residential roofs because of it. Right. We'll have to think about what kind of restriction is on there, but there should be some restriction. It just seemed a little like too specific that it might be missing something. Yeah, that I was my like. I don't know about making it that specific, but I right. might might just say just completely prohibit it. Okay. But when you catch that on site plan review, right, and then we can say that's not allowed. Yeah, but unless we have some sort of waiver rights or some negotiation point, we have to make them prove it. Prove that you don't do this. And if it were for like a half an hour on solstice or something, then maybe you, you let it go. If it's four hours a day all winter, that's probably not a good idea. And then what about the other provisions in there? Um, well, I just made the setbacks match what I put in the table for setbacks. Um, and then I took out the 25 acre requirement. Um. The only thing that stuck out to me was most hotels want to have a drop off loop, and most of those kit parts have parking in front as well. So I just don't want to, I don't want to squeeze them so far forward that they can't make that front work the way they want it to work. Um. Well, so the setbacks are usually minimums. Okay. Well, this one just says shall be set back. Okay, so like a minimum. As a minimum, that's fine. I 
Anything else? It's 9.05. I won't. So we have a public hearing coming up. All right. Um, let's see, where are we? Oh, yeah. Continued public hearing for 467 Main Street. Um, we got some updated parking traffic movement stuff with the package, but then recently some new stuff came in, which we just haven't had a chance to look at. So let's get some updates, um, some direction if there's any public comment, and then we'll just um, get you guys ready for the next meeting. That'd be great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, for the record, Attorney Brian McGraham, uh, representing uh, the applicant bogus uh, properties. Um, again, for introduction purposes, uh, this is Ray Bogus, who's the manager and member of Bogus, Bogus Properties, LLC. Uh, Rob Del Savio and Sarah Reinhardt are here from MBOX Studios, our architectural um, uh, team members. And Tom uh, Batula is from Design Consultants, is our uh, traffic con consultant. Um, we do have some follow-up information that we'd like to present uh, to the board. Um, as you've mentioned, Mr. Chair, unfortunately we're, we were not able to get some of this information to the Commission in advance because of the holiday schedule that really wasn't conducive for that. Um, we'd like to present some information to you in general terms. Any feedback you're willing to present tonight to us would be a bonus. Fully understanding that you're, you have a need to review what you're going to see tonight where you're seeing some of it for the first, uh, first time, so we, we certainly respect that. Um, some of the things that we, we would like to touch on tonight uh, in our presentation is really to um, address matters and or concerns that were raised by the Commission um, at the last hearing. And to be uh, specific in that regard, uh, the Commission had asked them for some changes on the architectural components of the building, some brick additions, some facade changes, including balconies, et cetera. So uh, Rob and Sarah would like to touch on that uh, a little bit. Uh, we also have a response to your concerns for the snow management. Um, that was uh, brought up at the last meeting. Uh, we would like to um, respond to the parking spaces, the contact spaces, and the need to add some additional parking uh, that was brought up uh, by the Commission. There's also a concern in regards to trash management. We'd like to give you ideas and thoughts on that. Um, there was a little bit of discussion on the, um, on the property management and how that would work and the commitment to have someone there uh, for a specific period of time during the week. Uh, that was a concern of the Commission. And then finally, Tom can uh, talk a little bit about uh, his restudy, for lack of a better term, as it relates to traffic. There was um, a request to plug in new um, new figures in relation to certain turning and movements uh, in and out of the site and on Green Street and Main Street. So Tom is prepared to address that to the Commission and give you some information on that tonight, too. So with that said, I'd like to hand it over uh, to the architectural team. And um, they can start off if that's okay. Sure. And Sarah will hand out some copies of what's in the show. It's, it's really not that much different than what we sent you last week. Uh, you can just click down. That one? Yeah, that, sure, that's fine. So we'll just start with this one. It's the ground floor plan just to reorient everybody. Main Street is here. Green Street and stuff along the side there. So this represents some changes that we've made to the plan since our last meeting. I think the first one that we did was look to try to ease some of the congestion, the concern that we had about you know, egress out and egress into the garage and sight lines and queuings. So we originally had the garage door here. We pushed it back to here. Uh, which would allow a car to get off the street as the garage door opens, or conversely, let somebody wait out here with the garage door up with a better cone of vision until they have a chance to make a left or a right on the Green Street. So we think that does some good things for traffic management there. And at the same time, these are two parking spaces which were used to be fully contained within the structure itself. They're now effectively sort of outside, covered by the building above. But there could be an option, right, you can talk to this a bit more too, as to whether or not one of those is used for retail or visitor parking or something. It becomes a little bit more flexible if we have at least two out, outside the, uh, the confines of the garage. Um, the other thing that we did, we reconfigured the parking in this back area so you can actually drive in around and head back out. Originally, there were some conditions where you had to do a bit of backing out to get, our, get yourself back out onto Green Street. So we think that works pretty well. 
big thing in, in sort of reconfiguring all of that was that we were able to increase the parking count by two parking spaces. So we are, um, we've gone from 30, we're gone from 35 spaces to 39 right now. So um, actually had some good headway as a result of looking at some one-way configurations for this the loop around the horn here. Um, and the, the compact ratio we had previously had been about a 0.4 compact car ratio. We're down to 0.3 now, so we've gotten that a little bit more in line with where we'd like to see it. And the other thing we did was reconfigure the, the trash room a little bit. It has better access now if people bring their trash. Originally, we were thinking it would just be a management issue, but people could now bring their trash downstairs without having to go out to the garage it here and then management would be taking the trash from this room out the back way on days of pickup. And Ray can talk to that point a little bit more too. Um, it's a detail that we'll see on the upper levels but we've gotten some provisions for kitchen exhaust should some retail user food service place come in here. It actually does have some level of food prep. Um, so we can go to the next slide. So on the second and third floor we spent a fair amount of, a fair amount of time getting the units to be more right size for ones and two bedroom units because they were before they were probably overly big for both sides both one to two so in, even though we added a unit and had the parking to support that we were able to get rid of about 4,000 square feet of uh, square footage of the building on levels two three and four just by right sizing these units and also getting rid of some two bedrooms and having a few more ones now so right now we have 15 ones one bedrooms and 16 twos um, the other thing you'll see that we did here, which is a comment that you guys had brought up last time we were here, which it actually works out pretty well, is to incorporate some balcony, recessed balconies on the back of the building. Um, so we were showing those three here, and then one on the roof of the sort of the roof over the garage space for this unit in the back right-hand corner. So the balconies along the main street stay as they were, but we do have the three new ones. We'll see that in elevation as we go further down the page. Yeah, Um, on this plan, one of the things that changed, we originally had this clubhouse space sort of in this uh, quadrant. We've moved that further over to this side now with a very small exterior roof deck, very, very small. Um, and then up on the next floor up, we have the roof deck that we had shown you before. We've got some furnishings out there now. All of these are, uh, are planters to screen the edge of the deck, make it a little bit softer. And we're maintaining the four foot screen wall here to block all of the uh, mechanical equipment that's we visually block it from anybody off in that direction. <coughs> so on the elevations, this is the, the previous section that we had shown. Uh, it was taken back to this point, pushed the building back even further back here. This is showing the roof deck, which is very much out of sight line from good, even from good points down down this far. That was the only change on this drawing on the next one. And then one of the things you'd have to look a little bit more was to refine some of the detailing and the cornice lines and the clapboard uh, on this facade. We'll see that more, even more so on the back facade. We've got more brick on this corner of the building, which we'll see in that 3D view that we did the photo montage of. Um, so it's clapboard siding, brick that we've always had as well as the awnings and we refined and gave a little bit more dominance to the cornice on the corner unit, the corner behind the building there. And then this is the rear facade. You'd ask us to take a look at this and sort of like breathe some life into it and get some better articulation of the cornice levels and so forth. So the top view shows the more highly articulated cornice lines. Floors two and three show the inset balconies, which I think helps to also break down the height of the building in the back. Those will see it. So we think this has actually made some good improvements since the last time we were here. Thanks to some of the input that you've given us. Uh, yeah. This is before some of the same brick detailing that we're thinking. There's really no change here. Next slide. That was the rendering. Really no change in that uh, for the most part. So this is the photo montage we put together looking back down Main Street. You can see the articulation uh, of the red brick, which we didn't have to this degree before. So I think this starts to tie in nicely with the brick as it winds down um, and gives a good face looking back up to the center of town. And I don't know if you want to talk about this, Ray, or I, 
right then. So uh, when we were here last time, you we were a little bit concerned about snow storage and removal and so forth. So uh, Ray had gone out and talked to one or two different companies who do snow melt systems, um, in ground snow melt systems. So they put that together a plan that shows where they would do the snow melt system. And this is basically the area that has sky over it. So the rest of the building is sort of the yellow color is the ground is covered by the building. So um, that's a very good energy performance rates out of the system, very good actually. And um, so we'll be planning on implementing this for all of the pavement with sky above. Just to add to it, uh, there's no fire uh, risk to it at all. There's a three to six layer uh, sand base over it, so it prevents any fire. Um, and because of that, it's all mesh wiring as well. So it doesn't crack or anything, there's a lifetime warranty on it. And it's actually economically a lot more feasible than some of them. Next one. So that's under your concrete, though, or in your concrete? It's under the concrete. Under the concrete. Okay. And then you put the uh, sand base over it, and then you put your concrete. Do you know, like, how, what the rate of like snow melt is? Like, how much snow gets melted over? So what it does is it heats up to actually 120, but doesn't get to slab to 120. And uh, sand's actually a good conductor, and it gets to uh, uh, the slab well above uh, freezing level. So you turn it turns on before st uh, snows, right. and it turns right. off after it goes on a sensor. I think if it's like under 40 and at a certain moisture level, it turns on. So it heats the slab before, and then that way no uh, snow can accumulate. No snow collapse, yeah. Okay. And then it stays on obviously for a period of time after. So. Then you would have also ask us to take a look at uh, solar option by any chance. You said? Could you use solar? For uh, I, I asked for that. Um, the company that. Um, offers it doesn't actually have a uh, solar option at the moment you can connect to a solar but um, it's so economically feasible it's uh, 80.4 uh, kilowatts an hour of usage so it turns out to be in the town of Reading about a dollar 89 an hour to operate <laughs> a lot less than getting someone to shovel <laughs> <laughs> so I appreciate you guys uh, recommending that <laughs> And then this diagram just shows some of the um, effort that Ray put into thinking with the management company about how trash would be managed. Again, this is the trash from down here, and it's really two ways of getting the trash out of the building. One is through the red line to a pickup location located down at the end. The other way is through this other secondary egress door we have out of the garage uh, to a point over here where it can be picked up as well. And we also think in, uh, as of now, um, for the size building, three days a week, um, would work and we'd, we'd obviously have pick up in non-peak hours. Uh, we think in between 11 and 3 um, and obviously that would have to be adjusted according to the demand of um, how we need it. So if we need to add a day or two, we'll do that. There's no compactor anymore, right? No, there's no compactor. It would be very difficult. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and is recycling happening along with that? Yes, it would be recycling, yes. Um, we'd, we'd make a little area, obviously, separate recycling from off trash. And then um, we'd also balance the building as well. I know smell is a huge concern. We'd balance the building um, so everything would be pushed into the trash room rather than out. Um, do you want to walk through any of these? Or? Sure. I, yeah, this one, I was... As you guys know, I'm the traffic guy at DCI, but uh, Eric, who's a civil guy, uh, debriefed me on this one just a little bit. The question came up whether the two planned spots could be changed to three by moving this way a little bit. We looked at the electrical box, and indeed, the third parking spot can fit in there. The right. answer is yes. The answer is yes. Oh, so it's gone from two to three even since the plan you sent me. Yes, correct. Yeah, okay. the plan, this one only has yeah. two. This one right here, I see three. Uh, see these two right here? Yeah. Yeah, they would expand to three. Right. Okay. And that's obviously up to the town if they want that parking or not, but sure. you do have the option. Is that... Go to the next one. These are some turn radiuses. Um, what will be considered be the tight parking spots. Uh, you know, if you have any other concerns for any other parking areas, uh, please let us know. Uh, we can run this model again. Uh, but you know, these some areas also shows the loop, how a car would go around, come out. Um, everything seems pretty good to us. Um, nothing out of the ordinary in our opinion, but we'd also take your uh, 
can you scroll? Uh, there's another slide too that demonstrates this. Let me show some, some more of the parking areas. This is the uh, parallel parking space. I know it's concerned by the engineer, Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, but we can show that it's, it looks a little funky, but it does very much work. We earlier on, when we didn't have the loop, meant that that space would have been effectively backing out onto Green Street, but now it can make the loop and head back out. Head up. So. Okay, so the idea is that someone would come in, cross over the other lane, and then back in? <coughs> or they would go around this whole thing and try to, I guess you wouldn't. I think you would. You could, maybe you could do it either way. way. You, just, you would just come in here. And right, right. I mean, most people would probably yeah. do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Then it would be the way. way to put the car. I mean, essentially, it would work either way. You know, you could back in this way as well. Like, if they. I mean, people by nature probably won't waste this time, but if they went around and went that way, then they'd at least be with the flow of traffic. Yes. They'd be in the right yeah. lane. I mean, it's wherever we want to put the, uh, you know, the wheel guards, but it's, yeah, it, it really works either way. You can run that any way they want, but... Um. I just wonder who's going to get stuck with that spot, because <laughs> it's also <laughs> outside now, too. No, right? uh, well, semi-outside. Okay. Yeah. Apparently outside. Half, half. So the driver would get out outside. Well, your rent at last. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the driver would get out inside if they park that the right that way. Pull in that way. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Right? But it's, uh, I, I actually imagine that that spot would go to someone with a sort of a bigger truck or something that uh, fit feels like they want that, you know, someone not parking next to them. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. That's a good call. There's a lot of space there. It is. Such wisdom. Yeah, yeah, no, but... Yeah. I think the next slide are go to traffic. Which, uh, Tom can do this. You guys do So, hello again, welcome, to see, good to see everybody again. Happy New Year. So, going from what we talked about last time I was here, we basically decided, so this is, you can see November 2017, this is the all trip distribution. I wanted to put the old and the new side by side so we can, we can compare them. Um, and one thing that sort of struck me is that all these numbers add up to 100% as opposed to exiting is 100% and exiting 100%. I usually have to sort of mention that. I like, failed to mention that last time, but I probably should have. Um, that's why well, this is 73, right? And this is 27. 27 and 73 are 100. So the entering. In the AM, this is just AM. Is 27% of all the volume, and exiting is 73% of all the volume. So what we did, and, and I sort of confirmed it, like I double, triple checked that I wasn't doing the wrong thing. I went to Ray, Ray went to the town. I think the town might have gone to you guys. There's like this whole chain thing going on. Um, but we were, before we <coughs> made the model, we double checked we were doing the right thing. So for the AM, obviously people are leaving, and we wanted to make sure most conservative, just have everyone leave, like all the 73% leaving like this. So if you go to the next slide, so you can see here, all the 73% is now, everyone's doing this movement. Um, that's most conservative as possible. And we did the same thing for the PM, so if you go to the next slide, this is the old PM from the Valley of 2017. You can see here, it's a 60-40 split. Um, and we still have. But that 60%, instead of coming from all different places, we basically, as per direction, we decided, all right, most conservative possible, we'll break the model, what would happen if we had everyone coming down Main Street, everyone trying to take that left, and everyone making that right. If you go to the next slide, you'll see that's the distribution we used, all that 60% making that movement. So, 
in a nutshell, the I mean, as expected, everything changed. The vehicle over capacity. There's three big ways to, you know, four big ways to measure traffic: vehicle over C, vehicle over capacity, um, maximum queues, which could actually be 50th or 90th percentile delay, and then level of service, which is directly related to delay. So, as can be expected, you know, V over C changed, delay changed, the queue changed, but not by much, right? So it varied from fraction of the delay, if you just look at delay itself, um, and delay is at every movement, right? So a typical four-legged intersection will have 12 movements, right? Through, right, left for each of the four. Right? So delay for every movement varied by increasing from anywhere from a fraction of a second to three seconds at the most. So if you go to the next slide, um, the level of service summary didn't actually change. Not only the levels of service, one of the, the three seconds or less was not enough to knock the level of service to the next level of service. So it seemed like good news. Usually we measure major impact, significant impact, if there's a degradation in level of service. Usually E to F, because if it degrades from B to C or something, people don't really raise an eyebrow. But um, that was an interesting exercise. Um, I don't know if you guys wanted more detail on this or more questions or thoughts or uh, anything strike you guys. Do you, where do you get the 27% number of people coming into the site in the AM? That's strictly from the ITE trip generation manual. Mm -hmm. So that so they aggregate information from across the country. It's purely empirical data. And they come up with those numbers, and then we input them. We look about this thick, and we the right page, and oh, there it is, and we just put it like. Yeah. I turned my head around it, but then I realized that there's 35 trips an hour leaving, and more for the next hour, 35 trips, people have to come back to leave again, eventually, or you realize everyone's going to be gone. Like someone drops their kid off at daycare. Back. And goes grocery shopping. Yeah, 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 exactly. I think the thing to understand is that it's, it's the same for every project that we do a traffic study for. Right. So we're using the same, the same right. black box criteria. Black box is called a number of it. Apples, apples. Yeah. yeah. And so that's how we understand based that. On, we, uh, based on, it, when you actually look at how much data those numbers are based out of you you're surprised at how few samples they actually that you know sometimes and, and th this is just it, it's nationwide yeah it's the numbers you had we we the industry has to to use but it's not based off of hundreds of developments or thousands of developments it's usually based off of 25 or or maybe 30 that they sampled back in 1970, 80, or 90, or whatever, whenever they updated it. So, but all that being said, um, they do when it's egregious and it doesn't work all that well, then they go back and look at it and recalibrate it. So, how do they determine it's egregious and like like people like us complain? Yeah, yeah. yeah. People like engineers, like people in the field. Right. So, so I've I've had complaints from other towns and other cities that it's egregious. By the way, it does vary. There are a few. You know, some of them have half dozen. Yeah, some. And some, some of them, them do have, have a thousand. Yeah, when you look at apartments, those have a thousands. Yeah. But if you look at, you know, car wash open from a certain time to a certain time, that has six or something. So yeah. But you yeah, know, I've had had some cities and towns say, look, this is egregious, and I said, well, what should I do? Well, oh, forget the book. Throw out the window. Go out. Similar sites, yeah. and so in some cases we've done that. But, but this this is relatively solid compared to some of the other projects. So are apartment buildings like this based on thousands of examples? I don't have it right in front of me, but yeah, it's either hundreds or thousands. It's it's quite a few. The ones that are very very small, like very specific, you know, there's fast food. You know, there's Donut shops with drive through donut shops without drive through It gets very specific. There's you know, certain kinds of car washes and certain types of 
pharmacies and it gets very, so the more specific it gets the harder it is to have thousands of them but apartments yeah there's going to be I would guess thousands if not hundreds of, of apartments I mean, this is going to be one of the it, and, and if you start thinking through what especially for apartments what the numbers mean it all makes sense and these numbers I looked at these before you know you're using the same the same trip generation numbers like you said someone goes out drops their kid off may a few people may come back but how often do people really once they leave the house in the morning they're usually people who are gone you've got you know however many apartments and yeah. how you know not everyone leaves and you know it's it so the numbers are it, it, in the right ballpark yeah. It might be in the report in the appendices. I don't remember if you looked at the appendices. <coughs> Sometimes they uh, they include it in the appendices. I don't see the. Uh, oh, he did one. Yeah. Number of studies ninety. Okay, so it's not even hundred for for two for two twenty. Uh, that gets pretty small for some of them. So ninety studies. The specialty retail had five studies. That one's But yeah, so it's it's in the back. So, I guess I, I'll go, I'll look when I come to, into the detail, but I guess the biggest um, concern um, is really the, the Q length, um, not necessarily the level of service, but right there's the two things that came up. One was the Q leaving the site and the Q on Green Street, which you know, certainly moving that, I think moving the garage door helps um, to sort of um, how that intersection of the, of the site entrance and Green Street works. I think that's, that's definitely a, a plus mm -hmm. um, there, or how people get off of Green Street on, into the site. That um, space is actually big enough for, for technically big enough for two cars' yeah. legs. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think that's, that's a, a, a great change. Um, and then sort of what that delay is um, because the, the bigger concern is um, uh, for Q is south from Main Street in the PM turning left. Um, and I, I'm not sure that there's um, a, a solution if it is a, a problem that you all need to take on, but I think it's something as we have uh, you know other public discussion about this that it's something we need to sort of uh, know and help people understand. Yeah, and, and I did want to say something. Yeah. I, I'm sorry, because that's the safety. That's really to me. That's this. Those two are. That's a safety issues. Um, uh, you're not going to solve the congestion, and you're not even going to contri really contribute to the congestion except for that one location. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. I just something because I I get questions about the queue. What does that yeah. mean? Is it like you know during during the rush of three hours? Is it like on the queue? So the queue here is the 95th percentile of the peak 15 minute period, which means it only occurs five percent or less of the time during that peak 15 minute period, which means it might happen once, depending on the cycle length of the signal if it is signalized like these two. Yeah. So once per day you might have this size queue which for a lot of people is like oh it puts everything in perspective because they were thinking of you know 120 times a day but or it might be once during the a.m peak and once during the p.m peak, depending on how bad the peaks are but all of a sudden if it's only once or twice per day it's less of a safety issue because people don't get as frustrated it's like okay at 5 35 got this crazy queue Two minutes later, it clears up and life goes on. So 
how long is that crazy queue you're talking about? Um, it depends. So uh, we put all these crazy queues in the table. In fact, so if you, okay, let's go down a little bit. Ready? Um, keep going. All right, so this is an AM queue, and if you go to the next one, and there's a PM queue. Do you want to know about an AM queue or a PM queue, or do you care? Well, it looks okay. like the AM, AM so is the AM. failing, so. So these are from November, and then they went up by a little bit in the January, the one from this month. So is there a particular intersection you're interested in? Um, the Green Main intersection. So Green Main um, went from 415 to 465 for the westbound movement. And that means 415 feet. what? Feet. feet. Okay. Yeah, 415 feet to 465 feet. That's um, like 20 cars. Yeah, that's a lot of cars. It's 50, so that's two and a half cars. It's 50 feet. Yeah. He said 465 feet. Difference yeah, between 25 feet, feet per car. Right, roughly. I'm just saying overall. Oh, overall, okay, yeah. 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 Right now it's. Yeah. Okay. So it's two cars in addition based on this new restudy. Correct. Correct. Right. The, the problem there, though, is that the 20 other cars that are already there are a problem. And they're blocking the entrance. And there's no way to fix that right. in the short term. This isn't adding 10 cars, it's adding three cars, which it's not great to add any cars, but you know, it's silly to it's say not that we're not going to be adding cars. Yeah. Yeah. Crosswalk signal probably does the same yeah. damage, yeah. right? This is assuming that every car takes that left. Right. And so really the different right. the, the number to, that I would look at is the difference between if uh, um, the your your January number Q and the no build Q and you know what understanding that we're saying every car goes out there, which is isn't gonna happen. That's sort of the worst case scenario. What are we talking about adding? We're talking about adding, you know, in, in that in that ninety five time period. You know, this is just a thought. I don't know if it worked. I'm an engineer, but if you change the light signals from Washington Street, and you didn't allow the coming from um, like Sunny going up Main Street, if you didn't allow that one to, if you didn't release those cars for like 30 seconds, it would allow the car to take that left. And it'll back maybe up onto the track stop. What? We start backing up. On oh, it. it's. Yeah, that's a good call, yeah. That's why I'm not an engineer. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's just like pushing the problem somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> problem below and making it zone. worse, it's probably, because the train might be coming. <laughs> worse down. So 338 yeah. feet in the new build for the AM for Green at Main. Three, you, you said 338? Yeah, 338. I mean, I honestly think that it has to be a right-hand turn out of the exit. I just don't see it. It's already a failed intersection. Maybe for certain hours. Yeah. Well, that's fine. Know. Then we're sending everything down the residential street. I, I, I guess that's the other thing is that um, people are not going to. I don't know, maybe some people will because of where they're going, but you know there is some self-correction here that if you can't get out of the 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 garage because everyone's trying to the, the queue if you had left is four past the opening of the garage really the only thing you have to do is take a right and go someplace else to get back it's likely that it ends up the opposite of what we tried to do by breaking it right we tried to break it going left but it's possible that people will just become accustomed to going right because it's faster yeah a little bit faster and then that will leave they get system. stuck at the end to go into washington street right but we've relieved this intersection which is probably worse or at least i don't know if you go down to washington you're taking a from where we're trying to get to trying either to think if there's a light or a signal down there there is no signal, there is no stop sign. There is a four-way stop sign at Elliott and Green. There is no stop, you have to stop, but there is, I don't believe there's a stop sign at Elliott and Washington. Okay. What else do we want to do for traffic? Um, I, I think we just need time to look at the... And yeah. staff too, like 
especially yes. since this is brand new. Okay, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, actually, I got a couple what of we questions. asked you to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on the TIAS, you've got a minimum <coughs> sight line report, and it has um, right now the intermediate sight distance for a left turn maneuver out of the garage of 170 feet. But that's <coughs> assuming you've got 170 feet straight on and can look straight ahead. But you've got cars coming up uh, Main Street and taking a right onto green, uh, green at that point. <coughs> so you can't see if there's a car 170 feet around, coming around the corner. You've only got your 75 feet, is it? Uh, 46. 46 feet. So if I'm pulling out of the garage, there could be a car coming around the corner that I don't see until it's too late. Northbound on uh, Main to the right on Northbound on Main on a right on Green. Is that anywhere in the calculations? I'm sure it is. I'm not sure I understand your question. So a northbound vehicle on Main to right on Green. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the general... 45 feet before it hits the garage door. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's pulling out, the best they've got is a sight line of 45 feet, even oh. at 15 miles per hour versus 170. Right, pulling out, right. So we did the calculation for the, for the intersection as opposed to the, is this what you're saying, it's the driveway itself. Is pulling out here? No, not pulling out there. The driveway is about here. Yeah. Correct. So this is 46 feet, I, we just said. So if somebody's coming up here and taking a right and you're pulling out of the driveway, you're not going to see them until at what point? I know you've got 170 feet clear this way. Yeah. So they're going at a very low speed when they turn right here. So that's, that's so if the it's question right. becomes at what speed and what the sight line do they need? Right, but if they're turning right here, mm -hmm. it's more the high, it's more the higher speed or the ones going traveling at the post the speed limit for this entire distance. There are well, this is a one way. Oh, one way. Well, obviously, yeah, it's one way. I'm saying that's how it was retreat towards, the, uh, yeah, right, this towards the depot. But if you turn right yeah. here, the idea is you're going at a very low speed. It, but 15 miles is 170. So at mm -hmm. five miles, what do you need for a sight line? Right. I see the question. Um, I don't have that number memorized. I can certainly get it to you if that's what you're interested in. Well, but and is it I, within the 46 feet? It's a pretty wide sidewalk, too, though. Right. So there's a, you're slowing down to take that turn. You have some good clearance from the edge of curves. Moving, moving the door back gives you a little more sight line, so that's good. Right. Yeah. But it's also very close to the Green, Green Street um, lot line, I believe. I, I mean, I can tell you from, you know, doing this for 20 years, there's, it's a, Asheville is a national highway focused guidelines. Mm -hmm. So cities and towns for driveways, they have to have their own guidelines. In Cambridge, and I know Cambridge is in the public at Cambridge, but they say, look, if it's a residential street, street. we get any of those sight lines for cars. They, they want to know sight lines for pedestrians, and that's it. Because any car on a residential street, they're not worried about it. It's going 20 or less miles per hour. They're just not worried at that. But 20 is the magic number where you can make eye contact yeah. pedestrians and cars. So that's the magic number where they say, ah, we're not too worried about it. If any turning car is going less than 20 miles an hour, at that point, they're just not worried about any driveway. Okay. That's just, that's, that's Cambridge, yeah. but yeah, but so uh, I can tell you that the sight distance studies are made for higher speed motorways where you can't make eye contact and stopping speed doesn't increase, <coughs> literally increases exponentially and all of a sudden you've got issues. Right. But when you get in very low speed environments, it's just, eh, we just don't see crashes, we just, this doesn't happen. It's, it's just not a concern. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to make yeah. sure that, you know, I know that we have a certain limit where we can put a driveway from an intersection. Don't know what the town looks like. I assume that I don't know if the 46 feet works or not. It's 50, 50 is the, which is why they need more settlement approval. Okay. I also had a question about the parking inside. Were those illustrations hand drawn or were they computer generated? They're computer generated. Yeah, exactly. Because your first one, 
Which, what are you talking about? Which um, looking at entering parking area. You're talking about movements? The movements ones? Yes. Oh, the movements. Yes. Parking area maneuvers. Those are auto turn. Uh, do you use auto turn for that? Auto turn, yeah. Auto -cat. We, we DCI did it. We used auto cat and auto turn, which is part of auto cat, but yes. So for entering the parking area, it looks like whether you're coming east or west from Green Street, that you actually have to cross over to enter the parking area. Well, I'm sure you can, the way you design the model, clean it up for you if you want. I'm sure. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Wait, that image appears to be crossing over halfway into the other lane. Yep. So I'm looking at where the cars are going. I'm looking at the divider line between the two lanes, which looks to be right in the middle of this car as it enters the parking area. Well, it's Confused. positioning itself to get in the right-hand side. Talking about the overlap between these two? No, he's talking about where this car is going. where that car is actually going. In the width of Green Street. So I assume that this turn, these lines, are where the car is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those are the wheels. Those are the wheels. Mm -hmm. And this little divider the the is the separator between the lane, the exit, and the entrance. Is that correct? That's this dotted line right here. Yes. That dotted line, line. yes. Okay, so it's not physical. What this is showing is that every car entering is taking up both lanes. Is that correct? I see where you're getting at. Yeah. yeah. Um, we can get an answer for you. Um, we can ask yeah. Eric. He's, he, had, he couldn't make it tonight. He had an emergency, but we can get an answer I for mean, you. I mean, yes, you can cut it sharp, but is that actually going to work? Right. Oh, uh, yeah. We can we can re we can redo this. Um, well, so so the way that I see this is that right. You've got a lane here where the garage door is, basically about 18 feet wide. Mm -hmm. um, so 18 feet wide is um, wide enough Street. for two cars to really just you know just fit by each other. I mean, you're you're you're. It's parking, you know, very parking slow lot. and very yeah. Cautious. It's a parking lot yeah. sort of 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 maneuver. Um, Cars are six feet wide on average, or Honda Accord mirrors and mirrors six feet wide, so you could technically fit three if the mirrors are touching. But just to get kind of get give you the sense of of uh, the width of a car. Um, so these I do know that the for auto turn the the standard vehicle mm -hmm. is um, is something that's more like um, the uh, Lincoln Town car. I'm dating myself. <laughs> uh, but, um, but it's, I, I think it might actually be something, one yeah. of those, mm -hmm. like it's the big, it's very long, very wide. Yeah. Um, so, it, it, and you're probably, I mean, it's probably the case that if you had something like a uh, continent, uh, Lincoln Continental, two Lincoln Continentals trying to pass each other um, here, you, they would have to be very um, slow, slow and methodical, very cautious, and yeah. one of them stop and somebody yes. can get around. Yeah, and depending on what where you're trying to to turn in. So that's really what those auto turn. Um, uh, Paths represent, um, which is is I don't think is really is you, you got to take that with that knowledge into what you're looking at. I would say. Okay. John, where is the 18 foot width that you said? I, I'm just so if you see, it, it's not labeled on here. So the site plan labels it as almost 23, like 22 and a half at the at the entrance apron. Um, I'm looking at the garage, at the overhead garage door. Entrance. Yeah, right. Right, so. Oh, where the garage door is. Where the garage door okay, is. Okay, I see. I don't, I'm guessing that's about 20 feet, but. A f what's that? Oh, 18. It is 18, correctly. yeah. So, and it is narrowed down a little bit. You're effective with because that parking, th that parking stall number three plus the column between three and four 
you don't have full use of that swing, right? Yeah, Nick is is drawing that. So you got to kind of swing in after you get in the garage door. So, um, so through that area, it definitely is is tight. Two cars coming in and out at the same time. One's gonna there. You're gonna you're gonna have to wait. Not have to. You will. You know. You you could do it. Um, I, I don't. I guess my take on it is that I wouldn't think that with a 39 car parking garage that you're going to pass, have that many cars coming in and out at the same time, okay. passing that exact spot. But but that one spot, you're you're right on though, um, Tony. Is that that one spot is pretty tight. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I have one more question about how the trash would be handled. Yes. You give two options. So is the assumption that the trash truck is going to wait for the building manager to bring the trash out, or is it the building manager is going to tr bring the trash out and the trash truck is going to come by and pick it up later? Yes. So the building management is going to be there before the trash truck comes. They're going to bring everything out to the pickup spot. Trash uh, truck's going to come. Uh, load all the trash up and then <coughs> we're trying to make it as quick as possible. Yeah. It's an inconvenience for everyone and everywhere. So, so in one scenario the trash the trash is gonna be waiting in one half of your entrance. Yes, yeah, so or we can move it to the front parking if they want to pick it up there. Um, okay. Well, we're talking about eleven to three, so the morning rush has happened. Probably won't be picking it up on the street if it's that hour because those spots will be taken. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the bonus day for them. Okay. Um, I've got some, some comments on the elevations. You can take them for whatever they're worth, I guess. Yeah, leave the rendering up for a second. I really like this elevation. I like this rendering a lot. But you lost this. See this break on that corner? You didn't do that. You lost that too. You go to the elevations. Do you want me to zoom in? No, this is, good. this is good. So what you're showing on that rendering is some sort of change in this corner, which I really think you should implement because this is a big mass. And as you look at that view you have coming down Main Street, you've got this big dark mass. I really like what you did in the rendering with that break there. And then you can put the mass that are up there. You can't have this material down here this hardy plank on the ground. So either do the precast or talk about whatever this is. I'm not sure the scale of CMU works in here. You might want to consider doing something else, like an yeah. aircraft or something a little bigger. Oh, yeah, yeah. So we're more aircraft than CMU. That'll give you like a, like a 12 or 24, yeah. something bigger than a bigger scale on yeah. blocks or whatever. But definitely I think you got to break this. I think you have to break this. Either the cap lineup. Yeah, either. Yeah. 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 yeah, or the air or something. Because your rendering shows that, and the rendering is really nice. Mm -hmm. So I would do that there. Um, we're also trying to play with where the brick comes down, and they want this seems a little floating up there right now above the metal. Yeah. That'll work. Two cluster base material. Um, <coughs> on the next elevations. Same thing with that corner where this, this material is continuing. I think you could, at the very least, you have to wrap this, whatever's happening in the front. But this stuff will just get abused. It's mostly those corners. So okay. I think the rendering did better. And can you go back to that um, garage plan again? I'm not sure if you could do anything with two more cars. Yeah. Wait, did I go in the wrong way? You're going the wrong way. Okay. The very beginning. Yeah, that one there is good. That one's good. I think this is good. Looking at you know, John's concern with how this narrows in. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering why. <laughs> 
Why can't this piece move a little bit? At the very least, you can flip this sort of construction to start trying to apply it. If you pull this out a little bit, in line with that column. What we need to step back here. Well, we need to be able to get out of the stair. You're going to use that as an exit. Yeah, there. and it's the property line right there. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering if getting rid of that. Do we have to exit that way? Can you can you come out this way? Uh, we can't be dumping people from the fourth floor into the garage. We have to be getting out with. The other way to be egressing through. Yeah. Egress through adjacent. Right, because it up. I can egress to the lobby here. I think it's one of my options. I was just looking. But where were you trying to go? I was just trying to take this and move it up, it up a couple more. more feet to give you more width here and more width here. Mm -hmm. you're kind of losing that. That's all. Yeah. We'll call them there. So we'll take a look and see if we can do get it. Maybe six inches more or something. And we should also probably take a look at that wing wall there. Maybe getting rid of that or moving the column over can kind of just increase the color vision a little bit. More. Yeah, absolutely. What's the length of your complex spaces? Versus 17. And then your regular ones are 17. That's all I have. Uh, although I think you made good progress. I like what's coming out. Any other comments? Any public comments? <laughs> You guys are so lucky. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the three uh, spaces up at the front. I think that's a great improvement. I'm still nervous that the retail just needs more to activate that zone on Main Street. You know, I think that there's two spots, maybe three across the street before you get to the little inlet at Bunratty. And so if it's another restaurant or even a cafe or something with those tables, you're going to have more than three people um, and just nowhere for them to go. I have no, I've been like, sitting here trying to come up with something for folks to go to and I can't because there's nothing on Green Street. You know, the closest you could go all the way over to Ash Street and I just... You know, I want to see the, the retail succeed, and I don't know if that's going to happen. There's nowhere for people to go. I don't know. It's, been, um, it's partially the reason why we moved the garage door back, too. Like we said, we want to discuss with you guys. We can use these spaces however we think it's going to be, you know, best. Um, we can use it as visitor parking. We can use it as retail and visitor parking. We can use it as... I think you're better off actually assigning it to the the retail employees, employees. Or the managers or somebody. They're going to want to park somewhere. I think. That's what kind of was. I think you're more likely to get somebody to take a chance on a restaurant if they can park. <laughs> 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 and then people will either come downstairs or they'll come from the other developments. But we do want to activate some walking. Three more spaces on the street is. It's good. Nice. I no. I'm. I'm. I but think it's. I, I it's a good thing. Getting. I just think about it being. If it's something popular. I mean, even if just the Starbucks lot has, I think, seven or eight, maybe nine, and they're pretty constantly full. Um, so that's really not a walkable location. No. Yeah. That's, that's true. The difference. I, so I want to say, did you say that Nick that these two that are like partially in the garage but not? They're. They're outside should the dedicated, locked door. Right, should be dedicated to retail. It employee. could be given over to the employee or yeah. the employees of that space. Yeah. Right. I just think you should think about that in, in relation to the parking ratio. Well, I, I don't think that we want to get into the management of their <coughs> parking like we have in, at 30 Haven, right. correct? Right. Um, I have no idea who, who they lease their yeah. parking spaces to. Um, so I, I guess I wouldn't advocate for for one way or the other. Um, I mean, the hope is that you don't need all the parking spaces that you have for, um, for your residential uses, which to me means that there's more people taking commuter rail um, than, um, than average. I don't know. 
don't think that's quite right. But um, but yeah, I wouldn't want I I wouldn't want to mandate or even allow one way or the other. I don't think I would mandate it. I'm just saying if you're going to tell me that you want to give them over to a customer versus a manager, I would prefer the manager have it. The customers are probably not going to be as careful or as diligent about how they park or pull in, whereas the residents and the, and the retail people will have some sort of um, connection to the building and help them take better care of it. Absolutely. That's just my impression of it. And uh, we're, we're on the same page. When we said retail, it's essentially what I was really thinking. Is, you know, a manager, like you said, someone's going to be there all day. Someone's taking a car off the street type thing. But, um, you know, it sounds like we can see what the demand is yeah. for the parking in the area. And if we could, you know, give three to managers, we'll give three. If we can give, you know, one, we'll give one. But um, we really don't know until it's... You know, if, if it's built and then if it's leased. So. I mean, if the garage isn't full and the, the retail employees have parking inside the garage, then those two could then potentially be used. Yeah, for, I know, just, I see that as pretty tricky, but yeah. It is, it's just a tricky spot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. to argue against myself, I think the other use of that space would be nice and could free something else up would be zip cars those spots and that could be accessible um, not personally, just to residents personally I don't know the process zip car I can look into it though um, I don't know if they have requirements for where they like and density requirements stuff like that but um, I can look into that I only have one other I just <laughs> um, I know that we told them to add balconies um, but balconies on Main Street make me nervous um, really? with folks leaving towels and just uh, to me I think that beautiful rendering gets marred pretty quickly with people's paraphernalia on the front there I think there's there's a couple of buildings on Main Street right now that have front facing um, balconies and I'm personally it's just my own aesthetic preferences I so one thing to say to that so um I don't know if you've seen newer buildings with larger windows. One thing that kind of bugs me a little bit is you drive by, you see everything in their apartments. They could have yeah. plantings, they could look nice, it could be messy, it could be carpets. It, it doesn't matter. You, are, you, know, you look around these buildings, you can see everything into their lives. Um, so it gives you a buffer with A the, little bit of a buffer there as well. I mean, you have rules that say no. In the condo yeah, experience. I just, uh, it's it, only no, it, my it, personal aesthetic. I agree with you. It makes the building, it diminishes the building. Right. Um, but we can look into putting something in the lease, maybe. It says no hanging anything on front balconies. Or any, any balconies, realistically. But. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you for the update. Uh, when are we scheduled next? So, um, is 20 seconds really full? Um, the meeting after that is the 12th. Um, the other thing is, like, staff haven't, haven't had a chance to look at this, and I'm not going to be here next week. So, coordinating in time for the 20 second will be really tricky. Okay. Um, so, if the applicant's willing, I would say February 12th would be a better agenda to put this on. Um, um, the only thing I, if I could add, Mr. Chair, just on that, um, unfortunately, we're running up some time, we're running into time frames on our purchase agreement. Okay. That's going to take us beyond our contingency dates to be up front with the commission. The 12th? It will take us beyond, so we were vulnerable. We would have to go to the owner of the property and ask for it, which we might get, but I don't know if they will. Um, that's why I just wanted to. So, what I would respectfully suggest is, is to continue, continue to next, the next meeting, we will request <coughs> time um, to try to do that. And if, we, if we can get that, we'll get that back to Julie and then we would just send a letter continuing. How soon will I know that? Because like, I'm going to have to like put all this together. I'm gonna, I'll it's contact, all staff feedback yeah. by Thursday of this week. I'm going to call them tomorrow. Okay. I'll get right on it, Julie. Monday's a holiday. Right. Right. So we're only here for three days next week. I understand. 
<coughs> and I, I honestly don't anticipate an issue, but I, I, you know, obviously I just don't like to be left vulnerable like that after coming this far. Julie, for us to get staff feedback for the 22nd, when would staff have to get stuff back to you? I know, it's tough. It's it's tight. Tight. It doesn't it's work. Really yeah. It doesn't really work. Um, it's a lot of stress for me and... <laughs> we don't have much of a bench, I'll tell you that right now. We are a one-man band. Yeah. So. so. Ryan's also just back into the office after two weeks out. Yeah. He's swamped. So. The, it doesn't, planning staff is, you're looking at it, but other departments are as thinly stretched as we are. So that's the problem. Well, I totally respect that. I'm just talking about. Are you about talking about having it two weeks from tonight with a holiday weekend thrown in the middle? It's tough. What's our ability to cancel <laughs> on them? Not really. But we can't do that, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't expect there to be a big bust on the engineering side, right? I don't think. Right, I don't either. It's just, it's asking a lot of You would also people. have to get back, you would also, if there were some problem, they would have to get back to you in time for you to correct whatever that is before the call took them as well. I mean, I, I could try to pull a rabbit out of a hat, but it's just, I just want to be upfront that it's, this is not an ideal scenario. I know. I'm just, what I would ask is, is I'm, uh, the first thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to request a continuance. And, and I anticipate I won't have an issue with that, uh, or an extension I should, um, under our agreement. And I will work closely with Julie and Jean and let them know what's going on. And I'll get in touch with you right away. You know what we're dealing with. I have a good relationship with the Council for the Cellar. We certainly have made tremendous progress. We appreciate uh, you seeing us uh, tonight and trying to advance it. I think that they will know that. And um, I expect I expect cooperation. Okay. Well, on the 22nd, there's no guarantee that there would be a vote. Is that correct? Correct. Well, there never is. Yeah. But, uh, Which means that you would go beyond your uh, purchase and sale agreement anyhow, correct? Right. So but you've got to that, get the yeah. continuance period. Well, there's a chance there could be a vote on the 22nd. That's a possibility. Yes. Yeah. But so. you can't work on that assumption because if there's not, you're still up the creek. But if it's continued to after February 1, because that's our date deadline now, mm -hmm. I walk out of here tonight and I'm I'm in I'm in breach. I don't have any chance if they if they say no. I mean, I think that we can do the 22nd and work with you on the next day to try to get it continued to the 12th. Yeah, and I think that's going to happen. I really do. Um, um, I just, I hate to walk out of here and, and just be totally vulnerable. And with all due respect, we could come back on the 22nd and, and, and uh, through the staff and, and the commission, you could say, sorry, you know, we tried, but we're not ready. You know, we just can't, as you said, we can't, we can't vote. We're not ready. And, and we will respect that. I mean, it, it is what it is, but I just don't want to walk out of here and hold it vulnerable. That's possible. I'd like to leave that option. So it would be the 22nd at 9 o'clock. Um, you continue to the 12th. If that is successful, you can have the 7.30 slot. So. <laughs> if, if, if I may ask, Mr. Chair, and, and if, 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 because I counsel for the seller might ask, do you think there's a good chance if we continue to drop and provide enough time that there's a, there's a real good possibility for a potential vote on the 12th? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, the 12th. Yeah. That helps with my conversation. That, you know, and, and I'm, I'm really um, yeah. optimistic that yeah, that's, that's going to happen tomorrow. That's fine. I would expect yeah. that we'd have enough information on the 12th to finish the yeah, I, I think that will happen. I really do. So we're going to continue to the 22nd at 9, and you're going to yeah. see what happens tomorrow? Or February well, yeah. 12th to 7.30. Right. 22nd at 9, and then Brian will get in touch with me first thing. And Attorney Latham represents the, um, 
so, so I'll tell him that the commission is anticipating that there be an extension. <laughs> also, I think he the next meeting is going to go very so late. I think it's good that he understands the commission in the process in the town. Just yeah. Morning. Yeah, I mean, I we were just in a, in a weird situation where we had a bunch of holidays behind us, and you weren't able to actually to get the stuff done either. Yeah, yeah some of it's on us. We acknowledge that. Right. So, absolutely. I'll work it out. Okay. Why don't we get a motion? Motion to continue to... Um, uh, 22nd to the 22nd um, at 9 o'clock. Second. All in favor? I don't know where I stand right now, so it's safer <laughs> not to vote. <laughs> I don't know. Opposed? Staying? <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'll be judging you. first thing in the morning. Okay. I All right. Thank you. Downtown parking. We need more yeah. spaces in front of us. Tell me whatever time you want. We, we usually do crop an hour increments. You know, you really use something to make it fall. Alright, yeah, that's fine. Okay. There's no, there's no more street cars. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Oh, yeah, let me just, um, I'm going to save this. Yeah, that's fine. Don't point. The land is in it. It's um, valuable. I'd hate to build a lot. I'd rather build a room. I'd rather build a room. Agreed, agreed, yes. Um, there's a gas station right next to this on the corner. Yeah, no, I think that that's where the vehicle Great, thank you. The rental building. It's too bad it would work perfect if, if this were on the corner. Yes. The other gas station, if you will. Not, not the other, the other uh, 128 tire, you know, yeah. like, and then left some of this open public parking. Okay, anything else you want to discuss? We did all the minutes. Discussion of downtown parking. There is none, right? Um. <laughs> There's about to be three more. <laughs> yeah. Um, this was just to uh, bring this back before this board, which we've talked about this. Um, it's going to be on the Board of Selectmen agenda on January 23rd, um, along with the housing production plan. Um, so we thought it made sense to at least have a conversation here about um, kind of what where we're at with this topic. And uh, the economic development director, who's now in sunny California, um, just in the nick of time. Yeah, well timed. Um, he did a fair amount of legwork on the topic of how do we plan for downtown parking and how do we move forward from an economic development point of view um, to think about some of the recommendations that are in the parking study that we have um, it's almost 10 years old now but um, one idea that he and I kicked around at Julie was you know what if we were to extract what's relevant from that study and give it a refresh to where we are today and try and come up with um, some strategies that Nelson Nygaard, for example, might recommend that we kind of boil it down to going forward. And um, Julie actually wrote a grant, I guess it was right when you first got here, or last yeah, year? Yeah, yeah. Okay. She actually wrote a grant to the state to see if we could get a little bit more money than, than what town budgets would offer to hire um, a consultant to come in and help us with downtown parking. The, the scope was excellent, but it was the state got afraid and they it said was no. Too technical yeah, for them. yeah, no, it's not. They don't have that kind of depth. That, that's literally what they told me. Yeah. <laughs> so the cost to do this the right way is obviously a big number. And obviously, in light of where we're at with budgets and financial constraints, it's really not reasonable at this point. 
So then we thought, well, maybe we just do a kind of a quick and dirty refresh on the, the study that we have on file. Um, so that's something we've been kicking around and I'm still waiting to hear back from Nelson Nygaard on, you know, how much would that be or what does it look like? They, they, they left. Yeah. All the people Many that of them. I know. Many yes. Of yeah. Left and went Lots of else, people. So. Yeah. Know, yeah. Too. So it's been tricky to even get a response. I've gotten a few emails, but that's about it. And at the end of the day, um, the conversations that we've had with the business community, and a lot of this was with the economic development director, you know, it's the kinds of things that I'm sure everyone hears, like um, two hour parking doesn't work for everybody. It works for what it was set up for, so that people don't park and then get on the train. But the reality is, there are varying needs of parking. And there are people who need to park once and have extended time to be in the downtown. And then there are people like the, um, the dry cleaners that would love to see, you know, turnover, real short-term parking. So the challenge is, uh, and then there's the issue about employee parking. We have a program for stickers and you can buy a sticker, but then you have to actually find a place to park and that's not easy. It's not perfect. Um, and of course, we know the signage is horrible around the parking and uh, we've been working again through a grant that Julie wrote on a wayfinding program with the, uh, one of the premier urban designers, Mark Faverman, who's done it in a lot of the cities and towns. And we actually have a meeting tomorrow morning at Whiteland Books, if anyone's interested, 8 a.m. Um, but we know we can do better on the signage so that people even know that there is parking behind CVS, for example. So those are just some of the key points that, that I wanted to bring up tonight um, kind of bring forward what, what the work that we've done mostly through the Economic Development Director. A couple of thoughts? Yeah. Um, one is I think that we need to get, you know, you, you brought up the comment about, um, about different parking needs um, and that, um, and I think what we probably need to do is get a good, better handle on which parking needs are not being met. Because I think a lot of parking needs are being met with the, with the parking that we have, um, but I think there are some components that aren't, and that then would help us narrow down to exactly what a, what is it we're trying to do um, what is it um, what's the management strategy with the parking that we have that can be changed to um, help in the problem in the areas that we have um, that's item number one and I have some ideas on how we might do that but I think that's the other thing is, um, I, f I feel like I'm going to sound crazy when I say this, but um, and maybe I do, but I don't think that we should be planning necessarily for um, the conditions of today, um, because I, uh, I do think that um, five years from now, we'll be in a completely different place in terms of how um, some people, a lot of people get around. And that goes right along with parking and the needs for parking. I, I don't know where that goes, but I, I would hate for us to waste all this, spend all this time trying to get, you know, all this, I don't know, short-term parking or long-term parking when people are not going to need that anymore because people are going to, you know, start, um, um, something's going to happen with, 
I, I, I don't know what, what it'll be, but maybe, you know, maybe Lyft gets better at what they do and people stop parking at down at the, at the depot and that opens up all those spots. Um, and then everyone who needs downtown parking that don't take, doesn't take Lyft then could park, um, could park down there. Um, I, I don't know, but I think that we need to go in eyes wide open that I, what I do know is 10 years from now, how we get around is going to be completely different and we're not going to all own our own cars and want to park five feet away from where we are. And so uh, to me, it seems like we don't want to spend a lot of capital yep. in trying to solve today's parking issues. Well, if, for example, and Julie and I um, heard a very interesting presentation from the town of Acton, where they've got a, an off-site area where all the commuters go, leave their car, and they run a shuttle. Um, Cross Town Connect, too. The trail area's got lots of land. That's where running Central Station should be. Where? We should have a multimodal station in the industrial area by the mm -hmm. tracks. Mm -hmm. Brings up the whole downtown. How many spots are at the depot? Mm -hmm. 200? That'd be. Right. I mean, that's what we need because they could build a garage there and then that would spur whatever it is that we were trying to do in that. So Triangle. Yeah. Yep. Look to MAPC um, transportation people about getting some technical assistance, like trying to figure out how to coordinate like a shuttle. Um, maybe like even working with North um, maybe having multiple locations, um, either in North Reading town with land or some private owned land in Reading. We haven't spoken to any well, private land owners, but... Wait a better opportunity, because that deep, that stop is closer to us than about the, the, um, Haverhill line. Um, you know, Reading and Wakefield are probably closer together. I would think somebody who can't park in Reading might run over to Wakefield. Yeah, I thought about that, like having sort of one in the south part of town and then one in the north part of town. Um, but we're, we're, I'll have to look at the email again, but we're on kind of the short list for potentially getting some technical assistance with that. Yeah. And we'll strategize around that to open up some of the spaces by the commuter rail downtown. So, there's obviously, there's an immediate need in the next year or two or three, especially once a lot of this stuff gets, you know, gets opened up. Yeah. And so, um, but I think there's, you know, there's different levels of time frames of, of need. Do we know if the increase in the sticker price used how many stickers were sold? I, I highly doubt it. I didn't buy three, so. <laughs> How many did you buy? I didn't buy any. I stopped commuting. Oh, that's right. Perfect timing. <laughs> I ride my bike to work now. <laughs> I stopped commuting. Not because of the price, it's just a change. Location. You stopped commuting via public transit. Stop taking the commuter rail. That would not have stopped me. The price would not have stopped me from buying right. that sticker. But I probably wouldn't have bought three like I did last time. One for each vehicle. Yeah, because you never know who's taking what sometimes. Something needs work or somebody needs a car here, so we were just shuffling. Yeah, it's not even worth talking about, yeah, really. Cut it off, like, per residence. Yeah. I think there's going to be some change. I already, I've talked to people that have had two stickers and they're only going to get one. Okay. Right? Because it was for that, like, second car just to park on the street. And then they... but, but that doesn't change parking demand. Right, because, because you're those not are parking. Spots. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah you're just yeah, means that just that's the car you're taking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And then um, I had mentioned before that I thought that any of these developments that can't meet their parking requirements and don't come up with some sort of shared parking alternative or some other, those the residents shouldn't be eligible to get the stickers. Um, because so we have no leverage getting people to figure out their parking solutions. And so somebody who lives, um, you know, 30 feet from the depot could potentially get a sticker for parking the depot. Solve right. their problem for the day. Yep. 
I mean, I think so. John, I was actually going to, to bring up your own point, which was to not, you know, solve today's problems, but to think about the next ones. And I think I'm thinking about it also in terms of the economic development plan going forward. So, you know, I don't know what the plans are for a new hire for Andrew, the replacement for him, but, you know, if you had someone with some, if you hired for someone with some parking and traffic background, that could be part of the overall long-term planning. There's certain targets in just thinking about, you know, how to what to expect for this. You're not solving today's issues necessarily, but you are kind of thinking about what the wish list would look like in five years, ten years. That's a good suggestion. What about free graduate student yes. thesis projects? Yeah, we're not... Um, <laughs> And that takes effort. No such thing as a free <laughs> student. We're actually, yeah, there's a little That's, more to it. We don't need intellect. We need someone like on the ground. Realistic. Yeah, no, I think that, that we can hire somebody um, with the skill set that can jump in on this with a, through the economic development director. Not, I mean, so the Graduate School of Design does like part of, they have a project that they have to do as part of graduation, so the urban development degree. Yeah. So they have to do a consulting project, particularly the ones that are with the Kennedy School. I mean, at least the so solving the current problems or identifying what the current problems is certainly something that a graduate school group could do. I, I know the procurement rules are probably the, the you know getting free help is challenging under it's a little tricky. Yes. But I've seen something similar be done as a consulting project. Or maybe they could assist whoever is on board. Yeah. So it looks like they want to have people. Yeah. Sometimes with that, you get the studio professors who really want to drive the project themselves, and they have like a whole different set of parameters or problems that they want the students to solve. Like I've sat in on those, actually went there, yeah. um, and they <laughs> don't necessarily end up being as like helpful as. I mean, I think there's a lot of good that can come out of them, but then there's a lot also a lot of other. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I like think it's a joint like, degree. I, I definitely think it's a good, like, suggestion. I've just, like, <laughs> seen how to get all the questions <laughs> answered. I mean, you, you're right. The, the, the question as a consulting project in a purest sense, right. Right, you're not going to be able to be the client in that true way because the student needs to get their right. things out of and it. The and the professor has to get their things out the of it. But you certainly could get some... Some, some, some part of what they do might be something we need. Right. Correct. They might yeah. do yes. or Yeah. We might not. We probably wouldn't be entirely driving the bus on that. Yes. Yeah. 60%. And take it. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's my point. Is yeah. It's just another hand. Right. That's a good idea. So open that now. Oh, catch your bread. Yeah. Fill the room. Yeah. <laughs> so, much, so much bread. Anything else? Is there a knife to cut it? <laughs> it's cut. Oh, it is? It yeah. is? Yeah. Because oh. it doesn't look like it's this. It's put it in so perfectly you can't tell. Because <laughs> I need more. Because my New Year's resolution was no more bread, so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, there are some pieces, though, of the Nelson Eichard study that are relevant. Yeah, that mm -hmm. still um, yeah. might be lo worth looking at. Yeah, that's exactly what we were, what we were thinking. Yeah. Not just like completely starting fresh. Yeah. But I think absolutely involving the downtown business owners and the dialogue is going to be huge. I guess, I guess that's part of, it's more than just the business owners though because I, they, I think they have, um, depending on who it is you talk to, 
they have their own perspective. And yep. the loudest is going to, you're going to hear the most of. Um, the one that feels slightest, you're going to hear the most from. But there's a lot of people who use parking downtown that um, are not the yep. th that, stakeholders. That, yeah, that would have a different viewpoint than the business owners that are trying to get customers or clients or whoever to park. One thing so. that like, like Valerie, uh, not Valerie, Danielle did this in um, North Reading, they put out a housing survey with their quarterly tax bill um, and they got a lot of response back because it's something that everyone gets when they open and they, um, and I was wondering if like that we should to get more input into some of these issues if that would be something you think people would respond to a way to like get the survey out there um, yeah. why not it's I don't know if it's free, but it's going out with something that's already right. Yeah. right to everyone. To everyone, or at least it gets them thinking. Maybe they'll call in, or maybe if they don't fill that out, they'll start thinking the why you're asking the question. But then you need somebody to take those responses yeah. back, <laughs> tabulate them. Economic development director. That's easy. <laughs> we don't have one of those right now. Believe me, I'm well aware of that. <laughs> I see that. Like but like you know, just as a way of getting yeah. feedback yeah. from people, yeah. yep. I thought that was a good. Yeah. And she got yeah. a pretty good response out of that survey. Yeah. Um. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Not bad. My motion. 10 30. <laughs> For a second. Favor? Yeah. First meeting on this night.